what happened.
हेलो हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एम ऑडिबल यस सर ऑडिबल यस सर ओके थैंक यू सो टुडे इज द फर्स्ट सेशन लाइक रिविजन सेशन वन फॉर एन टर्म एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द कंटेंट फ्रॉम वीक वन टू एट इन दिस सेशन एंड लाइक फ्रॉम वीक नाइन टू ट्वेल्व विल डिस्कस इन द सैटरडे सेशन ओके सो जस्ट let me share my screen so is my screen visible hello yes sir yes sir okay so this is revision session 1 for dbms and in this uh, we are going to discuss the content from week 1 uh, to 8 right and like week 9 to 12 we are going to discuss in saturday session okay so paper will follow the same pattern of previous term i hope you have access to the previous term question paper and yeah, same same number of questions you can expect and the weightage for uh, like if you ask week wise so like from week 1 to 8 you can expect uh, 55 60% weightage and for uh, week 9 to 12 you can expect around 40 45% weightage okay so yeah this is from week uh, 1 to 8 uh, 55 to 60% week 9 to 12 40 to 45% now today we'll discuss about, about the content from uh, week 1 to 8 i'm audible right yes sir Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Great. So what happened? Okay. So in the week one, uh, we have discussed about just intro to the course, right? Introduction to the course is there in the week one. so week one is about uh, intro to dbms course right so in that uh, you can just refer to the slide that is enough for the week one or uh, in that also like uh, primarily query processing is there then we have uh, levels of abstraction So these are the few topics from week one. Like you can focus on. The rest is just an intro to DBMS course. So we are not focusing much on week one part in this uh, session. So for this, you can refer to uh, to the slides. Like we have already uploaded quiz one uh, revision session slide in the supplementary content folder. It's uh, old uh, slides, but for week one, you can refer to those three four slides are there for week one. Just go to through it. Uh, that will be enough for week one. Nothing in it. Just a few slides are there. Just go through it once. That's it. now the main topic is week 2 and week 3 so i hope you have well prepared uh, for uh, op like so in this week we have discussed sql things right now uh, let's start with uh, creating a database right so in this uh, week 2 we have started uh, like creating a database like different types of command ddl command dml command dcl command right so we have created a database we have also seen how to create a table right Now anyone can tell me the syntax for creating a table. Create. Hmm. Create. Table. Table then. Table name. Okay. After that. Uh. We have to give uh, column names. Yeah. Column okay. name then. The respect to data type, right? Data type. Yes. And then. constant also right so this yes. thing will follow for all the columns like column 2 column 3 like same data type uh, for column 2 then constant for column 2 like this right till column n so this is the this is how we create a table right a syntax for creating a table now what are different types of uh, data type in the sql we have discussed data types tell me different types of data type we have discussed where care where care integers. then care then integers 
Date. Yes, date data type is there. Then numeric, right? A comma B. So these are the few uh, mostly used uh, data type that we have uh, discussed in this uh, course. So what's the difference between care and where care? If I just put n size here, tell me difference between care and where care. So both can take string as an input, right? Uh, yes. Sir. So yeah. So what's the difference between care and where care? Sir, if we define care uh, in n, the huh? size is fixed. In where care, we can allow to change size less than or equal to n. Right? Okay, so okay. suppose we have char five characters, and here also where char five characters. So can I input say Ram in both the case? Yes, I think not in char five. Not in here. Not here. Yes. Yes. Anyone? Yeah, you can insert in both. Hmm. So, what's the difference between these two? In in care, there will be a right padding with spaces. Huh. Right. So, in where care, it's variable character data type. So, like whatever the uh, string we are going to input in, it will take RAM. Okay, just a minute. RAM. Okay. So it will take three characters only, up to length of three character. But when when we use char data types, what it will do? It will take RAM as an input, but rest of the uh, field, like the rest of the character, it will fill with empty spaces. So here you can see one empty space, two empty space. After that, the comma will come. Okay. So here it will take fixed storage. Okay. For each uh, row, it will take fixed storage, and here you can see depending upon the length of a string it will take the storage right so if you input ram so it will take rim only that's it and in this case of where uh, in this in the case of character it will uh, pad uh, the rest of the character has an empty space right this is the main difference between so cat sir, and what, what cat. whatever we are typing uh, like whatever the input we have it will take everything yes both yeah both will take but if you, if you just input uh, ramesh here right so both are uh, greater than five right then what will happen in in both the case? Care will not take. No, both they will not yeah. take, right? And sir, if RAM uh, uh, one two is there, then uh, RAM one two means yes. like this. Yes. Yeah, when both they will take both uh, both the string it will. Okay, so we are putting that n equal to five, and then we are giving. Yeah. Okay. So what I am saying at max, it can take n size, right? Both the data type. But when you input the string which is having the less than n character, char will take the fixed amount of storage for its uh, size, and var char will take the variable uh, storage according to the uh, length of the string, because it will fill the remaining spaces by empty uh, two empty spaces. That's it. Now. We in case of Ramesh, will it truncate or will it just reject? Will it error out? It will reject. Will reject. Yeah. So you can try it also in PG admin. Now integer, I think we have already discussed. Integer is just we can take any number of integers. Date data type is just y y y or mm dd format or also it will take dd mm y y for. So it will take all types of. Uh, Data type. In fact, uh, instead of if you use this hyphen, you can also use this slash. So it will also take this as a data type for date. Now, what about numeric? What what is a? What is b? And if I say numeric uh, four comma two, then what are the examples for this particular uh, data types? Two two point two five point twenty five point two four decimal points and four total. Ah, huh? four decimal points. No, no, four total and two after decimal. Four total and so like. So it will take thirteen point one. Four digits. So after decimal point, two digits, right? Yes. Yeah. So two point two zero, twenty two point two zero, but uh, triple two point two is not valid, right? Because after decimal point, it will take two digits only. Right. Yeah. Other than it will throw an error for this particular data type. Okay, so any doubt in this data type? Where care, where care, integer, date, numeric? 
After decimal point, whatever this value is there, a comma b. So number of digits should be there after decimal point. But here you can see only point two is there, right? And also it, okay. it has already taken this three uh, digits here on the left hand side of decimal point, right? Okay, okay. It yeah. should take two. Okay. Yeah, two point two is also allowed. But after decimal point, uh, before decimal point, you can say uh, at only uh, two digits, not greater than two, right? Okay, so that's about the data type. Uh, now we have constraint. So what are the different types of constraint? Primary key, foreign key. Yes, uh, primary key. Then we have foreign key, then? Unique, not, not null. Not null. Unique, and then not null, then? Default. Check. Yeah, default, we have. Yeah, default also we can say, but we are not focusing on that. Check is there, right? So other the other constraints are also there, but we are not focusing on that. But first five is uh, important for the course. So what is unique will ensure. So like if we have say suppose name and we have data uh, sorry constraint as unique, right? So it will ensure that all the Filled in this particular uh, column name should have a unique value, right? So if we have RAM, so we cannot input one more RAM here, right? So name must be unique. So that's what an unique constraint will ensure. Now, what not null constraint will give us? So if we try to input uh, just uh, null value in the particular name table, if we give uh, not null here, so it will not allow us to uh, en enter the uh, null values, right? Empty space. So it will ensure that uh, all the uh, field for this particular column, it should be not null, and this will uh, ensure the uniqueness of the value, right? Now, what is primary key constraint? So, it, uh, so we, we, we are like, getting the uh, primary. We, we are specifying the primary key, and it has to be unique, and it cannot be null. Yeah. So, if we specify any column name as primary key, so by default, it will take unique plus not null constraint. Yes. Right. And primary key is used to uh, identify a unique row in a particular uh, table, right? And table can have only one primary key, right? So table can have only one primary key, right? Yeah. And what about foreign key? So it's uh, another table's primary key, but uh, like we're referencing it, so we can have multiple foreign keys. So is it necessary that the that particular attribute should be a foreign, uh, sorry, primary key of other table? Yes, sir, it is necessary. Okay. Suppose I have this student table, uh, say roll number. I'm underlining roll number because it is a primary key. So for example, then we have name. And then we have age here also for course table. Let us consider course. We have course name, then we have credit, and say, suppose uh, here course name is uh, primary key, and here roll number, right? So I, I can say this roll number is a foreign key referencing to this primary key of a particular student table, right? So, like, I can uh, define in that way by creating a table. But here you can see my, this is my primary key. So by default, it will have unique plus not null constraint, right? Suppose if I want to make any other attribute or a set of attribute, which is not a primary key. So in that case, uh, what I have to do, like it is possible to make any other key as a uh, foreign key. Suppose, for example, I want to make name. So I will add one more here name instead of rule number. I am adding name here uh, re referencing to student. So can I? Can I make this name as a foreign key referencing to this name from a student table? Uh, yes, sir, but it should be unique and null also. No, not, not, not null. null. Uh, that constant is not required, but it should be unique. Okay. It should have a unique value. 
So if you apply unique constraint to a name data type, sorry name uh, column, then we can make this particular column as a foreign key, right? In the course table. So remember this: if suppose any attribute is having unique constraint, then we can make that particular attribute as a foreign key, or as a uh, foreign key referencing to that particular key. Okay. So that's about the foreign key. Uh, any any doubt in this part? Okay. So what about check constraint? So what check constraint will do? Suppose if we put say have age column and we apply check constraint here. So if we put check age greater than eighteen, right? So it will ensure that whatever the condition is satis uh, condition is given in the in the particular uh, check constraint, it should satisfy. Okay. Then only it will uh, allow us to input the value in the particular column. Say for example, if I just try to insert the value seventeen, right, which is not greater greater than eighteen, so it will throw an error. So this will ensure that whatever the conditions we are specifying in the check column, it should meet, right? So that's the use of check constraint. Sir, if age is null in the, in any case, that uh, then it will fail this check condition or it will pass. Null is not a value, right? So we cannot compare with uh, any other uh, numeric value. So that uh, value can be added to the um, table with null. Without sir, without this check, so this check is like uh, so we cannot enter any age which is less than eighteen. Uh, but uh, null value, I think uh, I don't uh, know exactly. But yeah, I think we can insert unless we specify not null constraint here. But yeah, because we cannot compare the null with uh, any other value, right? Yes. Yeah. So it will allow. I, I think it will allow. You can try it on PG admin. Excuse me. If I have yes. an insert uh, statement. Mm -hmm. With uh, a primary key that is, let's say, student roll number, name, mm -hmm. and the age greater than eighteen. Let's say age is twenty-five. Then mm -hmm. will the insert work, or it will fail completely, or will it just insert but not uh, update the value in age? No, no. So like you are inserting a row having a roll number, name, and age get age twenty-five, right? Yes. Yes, it will insert definitely. No, Because but the, it, sorry, less than twenty, less than eighteen. Let's say no. five, five. No, seventeen five. You know, it will not allow. It will throw an error. That check constraint, uh, check okay. uh, constraint is violated like this. So the record won't be inserted. Yeah, it will Thank throw you. an error. Oh, I think we have discussed this concern in the week two session. Oh, and so, and this is only this is only in progress, right? Sorry, is this a standard SQL or in progress only? Standard SQL, yeah, data type. Okay. Okay. Any uh, any doubt from constraint part? So what is the default one? So default is like any default value you want to default put. Default value, yeah. Okay. You can choose. Say suppose you are inserting just you can give some default for whatever the record you will insert. You just want to insert uh, M for male. Okay, if you are just using that particular table for a male candidate only, right? So it will take whatever default value is provided in the condition, right? Okay, like if it will like uh, the default value. If you put uh, an, any other value, it will like override default value. Or... Uh, no. Yes, yes, it will override. Yeah. If you okay. don't mention, then it will take a default value. Okay. Yeah. If you may, if you uh, specify it, then it will take that value. Okay. So that's it from concern data type. Then what else? Okay. Okay, so we have discussed concern. We have discussed. So let's try to solve this particular question. This is previous year question. So this is a data type schema is given to us. Uh, we need to uh, select a correct statement for a schedule table, right? Okay. So option is already given, but so why option A is correct or not correct? Tell me, this is table, right? So it should have all the columns. So match ID is there. The data type is also mentioned, right? And this key indicates primary key, right? And we're taking uh, the reference like this is a foreign key. We're taking reference from a match ID, right? 
so tell me which one is correct so what about option a match id is there care primary key okay satisfied venue where care date where care okay team 1 okay team 2 then foreign key team 1 references teams team id foreign key team 2 references teams team id right here you can see this indicate the foreign key referencing to a uh, this particular team id from teams table right so this is correct right the so option mm -hmm. a is correct so what about yes, option sir. b no it's wrong because well, match id is a primary Why? key so it, it can't be a foreign key also in the same table okay so here foreign key match id referencing to result match no yeah this is not no. correct right hmm. no 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 look at the match id is a primary key in this table hmm so if a call, if a value is primary key it can't be foreign key to another table right no no what it's saying that foreign key this match id is taking reference from this particular match id from the result table right this is not it correct it cannot happen because that match id in result table is itself uh, having a reference to the schedule so reverse is correct this match id is taking reference from this particular uh, schedule table right yes no that's, that's what, what i meant what i meant yes. is if you look at the table schedule mm -hmm. what is the primary key for schedule it is match id yes right right so then it can be a foreign key in some other table right. but it can't be a foreign key within the same table no it can be foreign key in same table also suppose if oh, i yeah, want yeah, to it, make it, this it, particular it can be, it can be. no yeah. no you correct it can be suppose i i can make this match id primary key yeah because it's taking reference from this yeah yeah so for example it. if you have a smell, yeah referee or something like that yeah it can be it can be So here, what is saying this match ID is taking reference from this result table, which is not correct, right? So that's why this option is not correct. Now in option C, what about option C? Uh, team ID, team is there. Foreign key, okay. So team underscore one, comma team underscore two. This is composite key, right? So it is. We are not saying this composite key is there, right? Referencing to teams team underscore ID. This is not correct. so option c is not correct what about option d uh, same same as option a but only difference is that here we have specified primary key uh, after the data type and here we have specifically mentioned primary key is match underscore id right so we can mention the primary key in two different way either we can directly specify along with the column name or directly we can use like this also primary key inside the bracket the attribute name right so that's the thing is same yeah so this option d is also correct at any doubt uh, in this question you can try to uh, create a, a create table statement for this teams points table result or okay so after the session you can try out this so th that's it from this side now okay uh, this question we have discussed this uh, data type and constant so we have created a table first then we are trying to insert the record right so this following sql statement is executed in the given order so table employee has been created role number is a primary key having integer data type name is where care okay size is 6 and which is unique constraint age is int and check is age greater than 18 now tell me uh, which of the uh, this uh, four or five st statement uh, will get inserted and which will give an error So first one will give the error. The uh, second one, uh, the Hamleta, Hamanta. Why? Because in the where care we are allowing only six characters. Ah. Name is bigger than. Yeah. So it will not get insert. Then second. Sir, fifth one. Ages one will get inserted. Third one. Yes, sir. The name. Asim. Roll number is two. Then uh, age is twenty one, right? So this will get inserted. What about this fourth statement? Insert into employee values three. Submit twenty two. It will also insert. 
Samir uh, five, right? Twenty two. Okay, this one. What about this fifth statement? It will not. Mm -hmm. Why? Age. Not equal. Ah, not equal. Not equal. So this will not get inserted. What about this six? No. Why? Name is not unique. Yeah. So we already insert this particular record, right? So we are executing in a particular sequence only, right? So this is already inserted. So assume is already there, and we have unique constraint to this particular name data type. Sorry, name column. So it will not allow us to insert one more assume, right? So this is also not get insert. So only two row will get insert. The first one is this third and fourth, right? So we have to find out what will the output of the below SQL query roll number. So roll number will get R two. And four, right? So the output will be no, not four, three. Output will be roll underscore number two and four, like this, right? This is the output. Any doubt in this part, anyone? Sir, two and three. Yeah, two and three. Okay, sorry, two and three. This one. Okay. Okay, next. Uh, let's move on to next question. So that's about uh, how to create creating a table, then inserting a record in a particular table. Now we already uh, given the OP right, so you must be pretty aware of uh, all the SQL uh, clauses, SQL query right, how to use, what are the aggregate functions, then how to use group and all those things. So we'll not going into in detail because we already have uh, uh, conducted sessions related to that. So We'll try to solve this question. Now tell me. So this is the score table, okay? And then we have to match the output of this SQL query with the uh, correct output, right? So tell me. Uh, select count S two from score. Five. Five. S two about one two three four five. Why why not this null values? Because the count ignore the null value. Yeah. So all the aggregate functions, all aggregate functions, other than count star will ignore null values. Okay. So all the aggregate function other than count star ignore the null value. Suppose instead of yeah S two is a B one select count star from score. Now tell me what is the output of this query? A is five. Seven. Seven. B yeah. is seven because count star will not ignore the null values. So five seven. Then what about C? Don't look at the options. Uh, just tell me. You don't need to uh, do the calculations also. So it will uh, give the sum of. So M one, M two, M three. Yeah, from where roll number is two one F nine. Yeah, for this. So sum is here. You can see one thirty four. But the thing is, of what about S one plus S two? Because I think S two is null value, right? So what is seventy eight plus null? It will be seventy eight. No? Null seventy eight plus null. Null. Null, right? Because null is not a value, right? So we cannot equate it to zero, right? So the correct option will be here five for this particular thing. Now what about D? Average of S two. Tell me. Twenty-two point one four. Hmm. Like, tell me, it will take all the all the rows or uh, what? How many rows it will take? Sir, it will ignore all the null values. So it will be thirty-three plus thirty-three, thirty-three, thirty-three divided by uh, five. Seven divided by seven. Tell me. Seven. Sir, five. I think. 
22.2 so why not divide by 5 because aggregate function will ignore hmm. null value yeah all the aggregate function will ignore null value so yeah so it should be divided by 5 divided by 5 yeah so we'll get 31 right as answer Yes. Okay. So sixty six, one thirty two, one fifty five divided by five thirty one, right? So correct option will be three. Uh, so five u, a five u two one, two one. Uh, C C option, right? Okay. Anyone any doubt in this part? Plus remember this: all the aggregate functions other than counts I will ignore the null values. Okay. Sir, any, I, in, I have a doubt, sir. Ah, uh, yes. So, in option C, uh, if we said that uh, the aggregate functions ignore null values besides uh, count star, then mm -hmm. why some seventy-eight plus null is null? Because if we ignore null, then seventy-eight should be seven. And seventy-eight plus null should no. be seven. No, I said aggregate function. We have adding just s one plus s two, right? We are not using any aggregate functions here. We are just okay. adding seven okay. s one plus s two. It is seventy-eight plus null, right? Okay, okay, sir. Okay, thank yeah. you. Sir, what does count star do? Count star means it will count all the records. Uh, one, two, three, no, that like this. Okay. Number of rows in a table. Right. The star means all the columns, right? So, okay. Now, uh, um, count, count star and uh, count as three column with null value. Will it have difference? Sorry, count. Like uh, for this entire table, we we'll take the count star. Mm -hmm. okay, the total number of rows are seven. Yes, this. And uh, count S one. Count S one. It will be six, of... right? Here yeah, S two. Only five. aggregate function, so we'll ignore the null value. No? Yeah, count the is... count. Count is also aggregate function, no? Count is also aggregate function. Yes. But when you calculate the average, then null will be ignored, no? Yes. So yeah, minimum, maximum, uh, then average, sum, and count. These are the aggregate oh. functions. These are all the things where null will not be included. Yeah. So okay. Let... When, when the null will be included? What is this one? Sir, in one way we can think about this is this, because we, when we are counting all, we are counting the entire tuple, and the tuple hmm. is it's right. not null. So right. it's not possible that all the uh, field, like all the uh, row, like entire column will be a row will be null, right? No, but we are if you are counting a specific column, not the entire count star. No, count star will count number of tuples directly present in the given table. Yeah, yeah, not the count star. I'm telling. I'm talking about a count a specific column. The count S two is only we are counting this particular. Uh, rows, right? As to yeah, number yeah, of yeah, rows yeah. in particular table, uh, in particular column name. So only uh, it will ignore the null values. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when the null will be included, which command? Null will not be included in any of the aggregate functions. Okay. Yeah. Count star. I said because if we insert all the like, it is not possible to have the all the particular. Uh, Entire row as a null value, right? Right, right, yeah. right. Even if we add uh, 21 F8 and all have null values, still it will count this particular row, count star. Okay, so that's about. Uh, so null null value can basically be used only for comparison, existence or non-existence, right? Yeah, like co not comparison. You can only check whether is, is null, null or not. Yeah. yeah. Is null or not? You cannot equate to yeah. Basically, to saying one. a particular value is null or not. Yeah, is null or not, right? Only we can say whether it is null or not. Only we can check. We cannot compare it also, right? Okay, so that's the thing. Uh, what we have discussed, yeah. Then we have different types of joins. So we have already discussed. Uh, in the previous uh, sessions and the OP sessions also in week two and week three. So how this natural join works? What will the output of uh, this particular query?
tell me okay so how will you approach this particular question the uh, like uh, clear id and name field and jersey so whatever is same that will uh, get so on the basis of name we'll probably be joining i think that appears to be there. okay so like which clause uh, which clause will execute first so okay, the so what is inside one from will happen okay. first yeah. inner loop the inner, inner one will happen first okay so what is order of execution in sql tell me sir take from is first first from right it will yes. go to that particular table here it is yes. from yeah so it, suppose we have from a uh, table 1 uh, then join table 2 so first it will perform the join operation then we can uh, then it will form clause will execute right Mm -hmm. so form or you can say join if join is there otherwise single table is there just form from then after that where where yes then if we have group by then group by will execute and if we have having clause then having clause will execute then after having select clause will execute right So but once we select, select the particular, select yes. We write the select first, is it? But it gets executed the last. Yeah, basically we are going to particular table first, right? Then we are seeing which are the uh, conditions we have to apply on this particular condition uh, table, right? Then uh, right. we are seeing okay, once we apply the condition, whether we have whether whether we have to group by it or not. After grouping, then only we can use apply the having clause on the particular uh, aggregate column, right? Then the whatever the sir, we'll count, will, we are going to project it. Sorry, count. When is the order by? Order by will come once we uh, do the select operation. Okay, suppose we have selected. Okay, after this condition, then we can apply order by clause. After the select clause, order by clause will execute. Once we order, suppose if you want first five row, last five row, then you uh, you can say then we have this limit something right? Limit or offset is there? Then this clause will execute right? so this is order of execution yeah. from then where then group by having select once we have the row then we uh, order by will execute and after that uh, limit clause so count count is basically inside the select clause na so first from will execute here in this case so from is from this to like this right okay. and inside also this uh, this will execute first uh in our so what is the what is the last one limit or limit and offset suppose if we uh, use order by clause order in descending order for this jersey number is already in the descending uh in ascending order right so if we, if we just want first three rows so you can i can just say limit 3 so i will get first three rows okay so for that uh, we should order it right or select the uh, select a particular row Couple, or you can say a column name. Then only we can apply the limit clause. What does offset do? Offset will basically okay. Limit three will give us okay first three rows. Offset is basically if I said offset two, so it will skip first two rows. After that, it will give me uh, next three rows. Okay. So limit three is number of tuples, number of rows you want, and offset is number of like from the first. Uh, whatever you want to uh, skip, like first two, if you want to skip, then yeah, you will get. Suppose I want a, uh, I want a number of uh, say third, fourth, and fifth tuple. So then you can say limit three, offset two. Okay, that's it. Now, okay, tell me what is the output player ID name from players? So we have player ID name. This is. Uh, so we three. only ask for the draw. Yes, and then we have name jersey number, right? we have this name jersey number right as a j and we are performing natural join operation so what natural join will do based on common attribute it will perform the joining operation right natural join is based on common attribute it will perform the joining operation so here only name is column uh, sorry name is common so 
Tell me how it will uh, how it will execute. Consider this two as different table now. Player ID name is P and name and jersey number is J. Okay. Now we are performing natural join operation. Sir, that name whatever name is common will be selected and then we'll be so uh, then we'll be counting on that uh, table. Yeah. So tell me the output. How many? Sir, two. Rows? Sir, seven. Yeah. So first, Rudra will see, and then other Rudra is there. Rudra will match with Rudra, right? So we have uh, yes, A zero zero one Rudra ten. And again, it will see any other uh, common name is there. Yes, Rudra is also there, yes. right? So P zero zero five Rudra eighty. Then uh, no, other week is only one. Then Raghav is one. Then Krishnan. Is only one, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Then after again, Rudra will try to match with Rudra, right? So two more Rudras will be there, yeah, right? Okay. Rudra. Now this time, what will happen? P zero zero five Rudra ten. Okay, P zero zero five Rudra ten. Previously it was eighty, right? Now P zero zero five Rudra. Sorry, uh, P zero zero one Rudra. Eighty. Uh, eighty, right? So P zero zero five Rudra eighty this one column. So yeah, you can no, no, see. No, the top uh, the second row will be P zero zero one Rudra eighty. P zero zero one Rudra ten. No no. Then then P zero zero one Rudra eighty. The last yes, 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 last two will be P zero zero five. Yes yes. Yeah, because uh, first we'll try to match with this right. Yeah. So one two three four five six seven so total seven rows will be there, right? So these three don't have any common attributes like in the other table. So three, then for each of the rudra, two two rows will be there. So total seven. Anyone any doubt in this part? Uh, yes, sir. So can you explain this uh, rudra how it is shifted? I didn't get. Okay. Suppose consider this just two different table. Okay. Yeah, one is a uh, name and another is. Yeah, player ID name, name. this. this P and name and jersey number is J. Okay, these two are different table. Now, yes. what natural join will do based on the common attribute, it will try to join the table. So here name is the common attribute, right? Okay. So first row will check. Okay, any Rudra is there in the particular ta uh, table too? Yes, because Rudra and ten is there. So we'll get P zero zero one Rudra ten. Then again, P zero zero one Rudra will try to see okay whether we have this Rudra matching in J table. So again, here, here you can see Rudra is there, right? So again, P zero zero one Rudra eighty, right? So these three don't have any column, so uh, common table. So it will be as it is: Advik, Raghav, and Krishnan. But Rudra again, you can see P zero five Rudra will try to match with this Rudra, right? From the J J column, from J table. So again, it will be. P zero zero five Rudra eighty and again sorry it should be ten and then P zero zero five Rudra eighty so you can see seven columns will be there seven rows will be there right so just uh, try it once sir um, where can I find the videos where you explain natural join and inner join outer join In the week three, week three lecture. No, uh, at, the ones that you have done uh, as revision sessions. Yeah, in the YouTube channel, like we have this YouTube channel, right? Or oh, in the calendar also, I have uploaded the sessions. Okay. Yeah, you can watch it. Yeah. So that's about the question number four. Yeah. So this is about week two Sir. and yes. Sir, just a confirmation. Uh, can you please go to the previous question? Yeah, this one. in this one, the first two will have P zero zero one, is it? The last ah. two will have P zero zero five, is it? Yes, yes. Because we are trying to join P and J, right? In P we have player ID name, and in J we have name and jersey number. So first we will try to match P zero zero one the Rudra, then P zero zero five Rudra based on the common attribute, right? Okay. So if in the second table also I had the name, what would happen? Will there be any change? Second table name is name is there, na already. He name and jersey number. No, no second table. No, no, okay. If suppose I have the player ID in the second table, instead of name, 
yeah instead of name yeah. it is player id right yeah the yeah, player id you can see it is unique right so in this case uh, one two three five tuples will be there only right because there is no common tuple in this uh, like there is no repetition right yeah but what will happen to the the, the just see the number will be the repeating one okay okay repeating no change will be there the same table will be repeated yeah, same it? table will be there yeah okay this uh, additional thing is happening all because we are not having the player id repeated so we are repeating the player id in second table okay yeah you can you can just write yeah so here we are using natural join so how many columns will get player id name jersey number right yes only three column but the number of rows will be seven right now what if a same thing instead of natural join i will make it as cross join and i will apply one more condition here where p dot name equals to uh, j dot name okay in that case how many columns will be there how many rows will be there Twenty five rows. No, no. We have this condition now also. What happened? This p dot name equals to j dot name. Okay. Same thing in the case of natural function. Now we are performing joining operation based on the name attribute only, right? Right. Now, what's the difference in both the joins? How many no difference. columns I will get? Four. Yes. Same number of columns. Three columns. No, no. We'll get same number of rows, but columns will be four here in this case. Yes, no trouble. Yeah, player ID name. Then again, name and jersey number. Okay. Oh, name repeats two times, huh? Two times, yeah. In the cross join. In the case of natural join, we are joining based on the common attribute, so that column will be, uh, it will not get repeated. But in the case of cross join, there will be four columns. Okay. Sir, so same with the inner join, right? Same way inner join, yeah. So suppose if we ask, uh, say total number of rows and columns in the in this case, it will be seven plus three, ten. In the case of cross join, it will be seven plus four. Answer will be eleven. Okay. Yeah. So that's ab uh, that's about the SQL thing about week two and week three. Then we have uh, functions, triggers, and procedures, right? So for this, uh, you can just go through the slides. Only conceptual uh, thing is required, not the practical aspect. And for that, we have tutorial also based on that. So we can go through tutorials also, right? So that will be enough. And we have views also, right? So what is views? Tell me. So like temporary tables, unless we materialize them. Temporary table. What is the syntax for that? So create view as as create view. create view, then as. Tell me. Yeah. Do we need so to give any table name, name then any like SQL query or what? So SQL name. Name. Yeah. So where where we have to define that name? Before as after as. Then after where as. the SQL after query? as. So the correct create view. Then we have to give the view name. Okay. Whatever the a uh, table name or right? temporary name we want to create so say view name then as then the sql query will be there okay so based on the output of this sql query we'll create a new uh, we'll create a view uh, by this particular name okay the output of this sql query will get stored in this particular view okay so remember this syntax Okay, say suppose I'll take one example. Sort of execution you can note it down. Suppose if I want to create a view, say for uh, 
टॉप थ्री जर्सी नंबर ओके नॉट जर्सी नंबर टॉप थ्री ओके आई वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट अ व्यू टू स्टोर द नेम ऑफ अ प्लेयर हुज नेम स्टार्ट विथ आर ओनली सो टेल मी आई वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट अ व्यू बाई नेम से वी वन ओनली एंड सच दैट द कंडीशन इज अ प्लेयर नेम शुड स्टार्ट विथ आर that uh, thing like uh, uh, we will do that uh, so yeah like uh, query for that create view then v1 then as right so this is the syntax this is the table name then then we have to write a sql query for that so what will the sql query select name where name from player select name like name r from From player. player, okay. Where name yeah. like name like R R percent, okay. R percent. So I will get this Rudra, Raghav, and Rudra as a output, right? Yes. This one, but instead of name, I want to have jersey number also. Okay. Let's add jersey number here also. So I will get name jersey number. So Rudra. Ten, then Raghav, thirty, then one more Rudra, eighty. Now tell me if I run this SQL query. Suppose I run insert into v one values. Say Piyush. Uh, is the string comma say 99 and what will happen it will allow us to insert or what no can we insert a, re a record in the view temporary no. table no no why you cannot insert no we can only insert in the original table players and it is only a snapshot of the table it does not allow anything any modification okay you can you can insert using a view only if the underlying the view refers to an underlying table with a primary key and insert compatibility no okay suppose here a primary key is not there in this particular table forget that player id is not a primary key okay this is case one that There is no primary key. There is no notional, right? Constraint. Yeah, not no constraint, no primary. Yeah, and yeah. then let's say you have a view which says uh, view which only contains two columns, player player ID and name. Mm -hmm. Now, if no, name and jersey okay. only. So then, what you could do is yeah. you could say insert into uh, insert into the view name and jersey, and it should actually uh, insert those tuples. No, so insert into v1. So v1 is our view. Values is Piyush 99. So it will get insert here like this Piyush 99. No, no, it will get inserted into the player table. Player table or view table? No, no, player player table. Player so table. So in both. Player table. Okay, and here what will be the field? It will be name, name, name and jersey. Yes. Player ID will be null. Null. Right. Yes. We can do that. Sir, like till the view is active only. Then we can do yes. it, right? Yes. Till the view like is active only. Uh, like if we do a new query, it will we'll have to generate the view again. Yes. But suppose. So will it be case, saved? I mean, then if we do select star from that player, will it be showing there? Select star from there, yeah. For that particular session, it will be shown. So it there will are, be showing. Okay. Yeah. So I will give two tasks to do. The first one is case one. Consider there is no primary key, no constraint for this table. Uh, create a view on any two column, then try to insert a record, okay, which is not satisfying this particular condition in the view, okay, case one. So here, uh, Piyush is not starting from R, right? So try to insert Piyush in the particular table and see what is the output. Then in the next case, uh, try Ramesh, okay, then try to see what is the output in both players table and view table. Then in the case three, underline this. Underline in the cases, make this as a primary key. Then try to insert a record. Okay, if we make this as a primary key, then what will happen? Sir, what was case two? 
सॉरी की so in in this case uh, it will not insert because we are uh, not uh, we cannot insert null. we cannot have null primary because we cannot have null so what was the second case what was the second case you said the first one use that will be ramesh ha instead of use just ramesh because if we insert a piyush here piyush will get insert but if you run the query v1 select star from v1 you will not get piyush as a output right because this query will store the output of this particular query only right a view So name yes, is not sir. starting with R. Now then try to insert the Ramesh. Then see output of the both player table and view uh, table. Okay. Huh. Then in the case uh, case three, just make it as a primary key constant. Then see the output. Yeah. Okay. It will throw an error. Okay. Just try this out. And there is something called materialized view. I am not going into that. But after the end term, you can try it out. Instead of creating view, try to create material views and, and follow same things. Okay. Then you can see the difference between the view and materialized view. and there is something called refresh also okay so unless you refresh materialized views uh, the changes will not be passed in the original table so try to uh, just try it out okay and materialized views uh, will not be part of the end term so only view you can consider but still after the end term you can try it out so can i join view with any other table suppose select star from view join player can i do select star from uh, v1 join player can i join view and with a particular table you can try also that okay so sure it should Not both are one is permanent table, one is temporary table. So we can uh, join the two tables. Right? Not an issue. We'll get the output. So try to uh, in, the, in, the, in the in the in the query we can join here. In the query, yeah. Select star from V one. Join players. Yeah, you can see that. Just try to perform this uh, operation. Uh, you will be understand a better way. Okay. So. I have done this like maybe uh, two three times back. I, if I found the session link, I will uh, post it on this course. Okay. So that's from the week two three. Uh, okay. Any doubt in week two and three? Anyone? So mostly rest of the things are about SQL only that we have already discussed in the OP sessions and week two and week three sessions. Okay, so I think yeah, uh, SQL query then create insert aggregate functions and group by clauses we have discussed and views. Now in week four, what are the important topics? We have discussed about relational algebra. We have relational calculus also, right? Relational calculus. Then we have ER diagram. Okay. Suppose. Uh, okay. So in relational algebra, there are uh, mostly three operators. Pi, which is used for projection. Project any particular column. Then there is sigma. Sigma operator uh, is used for apply any condition. And then. we have this indicate cross join this indicates natural join when we uh, when we are going to learn the week 12 there is something called theta join also right so theta join then we have rename operator row Okay, uh, these are the few important operators in the relation algebra. You must know that a project is used basically uh, uh, projecting a particular column. Sigma will to apply the condition like where clause. Uh, projection will be equivalent to select clause. Then cross join, natural join, theta join. Theta join is basically a uh, uh, natural join with a particular condition. Okay. Then we have renaming operator. So we are using the alias for the table name. So yeah, we can use the rename operator. Now let's discuss one relational algebra question. 
ओके सपोज बाय हाँ बाय डिपार्टमेंट अंडर स्कोर नेम देन वी हैव टेबल नेम से दिस वन इज फैकल्टी एंड दिस वन इज स्टूडेंट ओके सो डिपार्टमेंट नेम इज फैकल्टी सॉरी टेबल नेम इज फैकल्टी सो वॉट विल द आउटपुट ऑफ दिस बाय डिपार्टमेंट नेम फैकल्टी टेल मी All the department name from faculty table. All the, oh, all department name. Bio is there, zoo is there, physics will be there. Then bio or zoo will get repeat. No sir. Yeah, in the relation algebra, like project operator, if you are using, it will not allow the uh, duplicate value, right? Duplicate value is not allowed. So basically, it will work as a distinct operator, right? So projection is equivalent to we can say select distinct, right? And whatever the column name is there. So bio, zoo, and physics only three will be there. Okay. Okay. Then we can apply the sigma operator condition also. So for that, suppose by department underscore name. Right. Then we have sigma. Then we have to specify the condition here. Say name equals to rows, and then we have table name that is faculty. Okay. So what will the output of this particular thing? Geology. Yeah. Uh, so basically, we are applying the where clause name equals to rows. So name equals to rows. Department name. We are projecting the department name that is geology. Right. That's it. The output. So that's how we apply the project operation and sigma operator. Now, what will the output of this particular query? Ah, uh, sorry, not query. Expression. Total number of tuples. Okay. Tell me. So here, this symbol indicates natural join. So we are joining faculty and student. Again, natural join question here. So on which column it will join this two table? Tell me. Name and department name. Name and department name is common, right? Now tell me the output. So one. What? Sorry. One. Number of tuples is one. So which which is that tuple? Um, F Z A Rose Geology. Rose Geology. Okay. So first, what natural join will do? It will try to uh, match the table based on the common column. So name department it will take as a common column, right? So Mary Biology is there. No. Abhi Geology is there. Abhi Biology is there. Abhi Physics is there, but Geology is not there, right? So it will not get done. Harry Physics is there. No, Harry is not present. Sunil, Sunil Biology, no. Rose Geology, yes. Rose Geology, Rose Geology. So only one tuple will be there. That is F zero zero nine, Rose Geology. That is F zero zero two, right? Okay. Any anyone any doubt in this part? The output will be just name and department here. So this will be the output: name and department, Rose and Geology. Sir, if so, it is if If condition is not given, then natural join. How many columns will it return? Which condition? If we don't Suppose want just name and department, yes, yes. Yeah. Then will it return one, two, three? Uh, I mean four. Four FID, columns. A uh, four number of columns. FID, four. name, department, and SID. Okay. Yeah. So total number of column will be four. Number of tuples will be one, right? Then if it in natural join, all the column name is different, then uh, it will give the cross join. Yeah. Suppose it is F name and it is S name. Here it is F department. It is S department because names are different. So it will perform the cross join and will get one, two, three, four, five, five into five, twenty-five rows. Okay. Sir. Yeah. And column, how many column? 
six. Yeah, six columns. So in the case of cross join, you can say rows equals to n into m, like number of uh, multiplication of the rows, and here columns will be addition, right? So suppose we have n one column, then we have n two column here, so it will be addition, right? Of column, so that's the thing for cross join. Okay, so this is about the relation algebra. Just just remember this uh, operators project. Project is basically a select distinct. Okay, it will give us a distinct output, right? Then sigma is a condition you can apply. Cross join, natural join, theta join, rename operator. So when you are revising this week four concept, uh, try to match with week L, uh, week sorry week twelve concept also. In week twelve we have equivalence rule, right? Equivalence of relation algebra. So there are few rules also. So please uh, try to go through it, and then you can come back to week four again. Because both the weeks are related uh, for relation algebra, so you can do that. Okay, that's it from relation algebra. So we'll try to solve one question. Okay, suppose if I want to convert this expression into TRC expression, this expression. so what what is the TR, trc expression for this particular thing expression tell me tupper relational calculus expression how to convert the given relational algebra expression into tupper relation calculus so you should know how to convert a relational algebra expression to a tupper relation expression to a domain relation a domain relation calculus or to sql query right and vice versa for all the four things so we have four things here sql then we have a uh, relation algebra we have tupper relation calculus we have domain relation calculus okay so we can ask any of the thing like if you are given uh, sql query try to convert in this any of the three things if you are given trc you should be able to convert the trc expression in any of the three things like also we can give some like problem statement directly so based on the problem statement uh, you like you need to uh, select the correct uh, maybe expression or a sql query right okay yes, so now seeing the options we can remember exactly what was it without the options it is not coming to my mind without the options it is not coming so okay let's try to uh, convert this first into trc tell me so the projection department name or or this national ha huh, yes how to write in the trc equivalent trc expression for this select name department name Okay. Say, let's say we have any tuple. Say any tuple. Say T or uh, any. You can T, variable T. T is a vertical that. slash. Yeah. Then there exists F belongs to faculty. So F belongs to faculty. Uh, there exists. Uh, yeah. S belonging to student. Hmm. So for a tupper relation calculus, we generally use curly braces. There's T, then there exists symbol. There exists F belongs to faculty. Then there exists S belongs to student. In few of the uh, reference book, we use comma also. Like uh, even if there is no comma, you can consider it. Okay. So because it's a non-procedural query language, so it will just give us the idea of uh, overall uh, what is the output we want, right? so that uh, there exist as belong to student so we have defined what is faculty what is student like f and s then we can say in the bracket belonging to yes the condition right joining condition there the belonging to also will come up sir yes belong is there na this symbol belongs to faculty then belongs to there exist belong belonging to yeah f dot name yeah so f dot name equals to s dot name s we need to up give the joining condition right and yes. f dot department, department name equals to 
एस डॉट डिपार्टमेंट नेम राइट देन एंड एंड देन वेयर कंडीशन सो वी हैव दिस टू टेबल वी हैव जॉइन इट राइट सो वी हैव डन द जॉइनिंग ऑपरेशन नाउ व्हाट वी हैव टू डू वी हैव टू डू द प्रोजेक्शन सो हाउ टू डू द प्रोजेक्शन हियर टेल मी टी डॉट नेम टी डॉट नेम इक्वल्स टू एस डॉट नेम एस डॉट नेम या एस डॉट नेम और एफ डॉट नेम यू कैन से एंड टी डॉट डिपार्टमेंट नेम इक्वल्स टू एस डॉट डिपार्टमेंट या दिस वन इज करेक्ट वेयर इज द वेयर कंडीशन where basically here we are not specified but natural join what will do it based on the common attribute it will join so we have specified the condition here f dot name equals to s dot name so uh, faculty name equals to student name and faculty department name must be equals to student department right okay. so this is the where condition here you can see till here and here from here we are projecting right yes we are projecting from here sir in the projection can we write f dot name also like f yeah. dot name is equal to t yes. suppose this this is this is the one of the uh, way to write a trs query suppose we don't want to uh, write this one right so what you can do simply instead t instead of t you can directly mention s dot name comma s dot department name okay then you don't you don't need to mention this condition only you can up to this condition only right rest of the things will be same we are specifying like this s dot name equals to s dot department we want to project this to from a student table uh, these are two tables we are performing the joining condition okay so from this like instead of this you can just directly like this also s dot name uh, comma s dot department that is also fine but we are generally following this convention only okay so when multiple select question we can ask this like yeah so yeah based on only we are focusing so now let's try to do this question this previous term question so we have given the relational schema airport flight this one right so we have sql query we need to match with the correct so first one is select sid f name from flight source is delhi destination is mumbai so you can like it may look confusing to you but there is one trick you can say delhi mumbai so where is delhi mumbai b only b here also a right and then 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 that's it na so we need to check okay for this a part given sql query whether a is correct or b is correct right so what we are finding out fid and f name from flights where source equals to delhi and destination equals to mumbai so pi fid f name right a uh, condition is source equals to delhi here you can see this symbol indicates or 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 this indicates and so this is not correct because we are just specifying yeah. our condition So A is not correct. Now what about B? Now this is DRC, right? Domain Relation Calculus. Do you know how it works? Domain Relation Calculus. How to easily identifying it as a domain relation calculus? Sorry. What is the identifier? Yeah, you can so syntax DRC, TRC, and all this individually. Yeah. So for TRC, we generally express like this. In the curly braces, we have mentioned specified the any variable t, and for that uh, we are mentioning the condition. Like there exists p for passenger, but in the case of domain relation calculus, we use this angular bracket. Okay. So and we have to space. So, so the first part, the the d e between the angular bracket is the first two elements of the yes. table flight. So this d e f g h, this corresponds to the column order, right? So the d e f g h belongs to flight table in the same order. Okay. Same, yeah. So flights where it is flights, yeah. So this is d, this is e, this is f, this is g, this is h. So now d is 
एफ आई डी ई इज एफ नेम ओके सो यू हैव टू कीप आई ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग ऑर्डर ओके सो देन ओनली यू कैन से राइट इट्स नॉट लाइक इफ यू मैंशन एफ जी देन डी ई एच हियर देन एफ जी विल कम फर्स्ट ओके सो डी ई विल गिव अस एफ आई डी एंड एफ नेम देन वेयर देर एग्जिस्ट डी ई एफ जी एस सो विच बिलोंग्स टू फ्लाइट स्टेबल एंड जी इक्वल्स टू दिल्ली ओके सो जी इज बेसिकली अ सोर्स सो जी इक्वल्स टू दिल्ली राइट so it equals to delhi and destination that is h equals to mumbai and h equals to mumbai right so this is the correct uh, expression for the uh, this output sql query any doubt in drc part so we have discussed drc in this case so let's try to take one example on drc also now tell me like what will the equivalent drc query for this sir i have a doubt uh, why yes. is d and e given in the brackets in the start That's what we are projecting here, right? We are finding out F I D and F name. Oh, okay, okay, got it. For that, the, we have said that D E F G S belong to flight stable, and yes, from sir, that we are uh, yes projecting this. Now uh, tell me the equivalent expression for this expression, D R C expression. So I will erase this. I will write it down here. Sir, what exactly when when you call it a projection? Is it from framing a table? Is a projection? Projection is basically we are just selecting two uh, columns like attributes from the table. Yeah, we are, we are constructing a table, is it? Yes, yeah, table projection. itself like this. So D E itself is F I D and F name, right? Okay. Uh, like this, you can output. So let's try to frame the D R C expression for this equivalent relational uh, algebra expression. Tell me. B C. So first, fix the notation here. What you want to a, use, B, right? C. Okay. So this is A, this is B, this is C, yeah. D, E, F. Okay. Now tell me. B, C. So we are finding out B, C. Is so B comma C, right? There exists A comma B comma C. Uh, element of uh, faculty. Hmm. Okay. Then in the angular process, we have to mention a comma b comma c, which belongs to faculty. D E F. For every D E F. Okay, I will write it down here. Oh, sorry, and or what? No comma. Comma here. And. Oh, it's a different. Okay, yeah. Tell me. Yes, tell me how to do that. We need to join, right? For joining is basically B equals to E and C equals to F. That we can easily mention. But how to perform the join here? How to mention? Okay, so we are projecting B and C. That is fine, right? Now what we are saying there exists A comma B comma C comma D comma E comma F. From which? From in that A B C belongs to faculty table, and E F belongs to student. E comma E comma F belongs to students table, right? And B equal to. Hmm. E. e equals to e and d c equals to f that's it right this is the uh, joining condition is we are projecting yeah this is equivalent expression for drc but the you have to note one thing that sequence must be same okay in that sequence only you have to use So can you show the final DRC expression once? This one. This is the. Uh, okay. This is. I cannot say case one. Uh, say way one. Okay. This is one of the way we can write. Or if you are using like this also, then what you can do? Put a bracket here. Then put a and condition. Then again there exist D E F. Okay. There exist D E F. Now again one that one one condition that D E F belongs to. Uh, student, and then after that, we can close that bracket, and we can mention 
that exists b equals to sorry equals to n equals to b equals to e and n c equals to f that is also possible but where you are putting the bracket that is more important okay so if you are mention all the variables uh, in the previous uh, in the first bracket itself before the first bracket then you can directly use the one like this but if you are not specifying uh, like this then you can also use and then there exists def then again in the in the in the uh, bracket there belongs uh, def belongs to student then you so can so apply like, this kind like of like we are uh, saying there exists abc and then we are having this bracket uh, yeah. specifying which those uh, abc are from faculty and then yes. we are doing uh, uh, there again, exists def. Uh, df and then in the bracket specifying this uh, uh, like where where from student these are df belonging to student yes like this and then we'll have another bracket outside it, it, which will actually have that condition that yeah. uh, b b b is equal to okay, so, b so we'll equals to and, e and b c equals, equals to f that's it and we have to put one bracket here also at the last so this is a one of the way so it will uh, come by practice only but for that i will recommend you one tutorial so i have tutorial so, uh, on this that bracket will be uh, only at the end right because in the beginning we didn't have any bracket so we'll only have like one side bracket sorry so we have to close the uh, we have to start the bracket which we are yeah here right? also do that yeah okay now that's the case but yeah for this you need practice and also i will recommend you to watch a tutorial on trc and drc in week 4 we have tutorial and in that i have discussed five questions uh, same way like converting a relational algebra expression to trc and drc okay so if you watch that i think yeah you are good to go with the questions please try to watch that so so now coming back to our question first question what what happened Okay, so we have solved this uh, particular SQL query. The correct answer is B here. Now, what about to PID from passengers, where PID not okay. in select PID from booking? So, what is giving us option C? Sorry, option C. C. How? First, tell me what is giving us. Like, what is the, what is the output of this? We are getting a uh, passenger ID the... of the passenger who have not booked any tickets, right? Now, who have not done any booking, right? This is the PID from booking. So, those who have done the booking, their passenger ID is there. Now, what we are projecting the passenger ID from passengers not in this particular. list right so we are getting passenger id who have not booked any tickets right so c is giving us that c pid so we are projecting pid that is correct now pid passengers minus pid passengers cross uh, sorry natural join bookings right so this one is correct right here we are projecting pid for the passengers those who have booked the tickets and then we are subtracting it from the all the passengers so we will get the passengers who have not booked the ticket right hello are you getting it what i am saying yes sir this is second term is the people right no second term is the people who book book the tickets no yeah. second term so all passengers minus the booked passengers so we will get the uh, id who have not booked the any tickets right yeah yeah so this option c is correct What about option D? Uh, this is TRC expression. T P belongs to passengers. B belongs to bookings. P dot PID equals to T dot TID. So bookings and passenger. Okay. So we have joined this based on this. Then and P dot PID equals to B dot BID. Where is B? Booking. Uh, this is not correct, na? We got the PID of the passenger. Okay. No, no. Yeah. This is this is joining condition, right? Sorry. This is joining condition here. We are projecting PID for uh, T dot PID. So here we are getting the passenger ID of a passengers. Those who have booked the ticket, right? Who booked the ticket? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So this is not a correct one. 
So basically, this is the equivalent to this expression only, right? Yes, sir. Huh. Okay. So now passenger booking flights, and this is passenger flights. Okay. Now next move on to our next third query. So passenger ID, gender. Okay. So passenger ID and gender is there. Flight is table, inner join, booking, passenger. Then we have this condition. So any one of this will be true. Okay. Now tell me, uh, which one is correct? E or F? If F is wrong, then what is wrong in this particular DRC? So here we are specified T. Then P belongs to passenger. B belongs to booking. F belongs to flights. P dot P ID goes to B dot B ID. We are joining. Passenger and booking table f dot f uh, f underscore id b dot f underscore id. So we are joining flights and booking table here, right? So we have joined all the three tables. Now uh, t dot p id. So we are projecting p id from the passengers table. So that's what we want. We are projecting gender from passengers table. That's what we want. Then the condition is f dot f num equals to indigos. Yes, and f dot date greater than this one. Right? So this one is correct, right? So E is correct. Now what about F P R? So what is P and R here? P Q R belong to passengers. So P Q R. So I will get P I D and genders. Okay. So this is correct. Okay. We don't have any problem till here. Now and there exists A B C D E. Now what is A B C D E? Which belongs to flights. So A B C D E. Okay. Now and B belongs to indigos. B means F F name. F name should not be B, na? Okay, F name, yeah. B belongs to indicos, and C means date. Date belongs to this, so this is also correct. Now there exists X, Y, Z, W, where X, Y, Z belongs to booking. So what is wrong in this particular uh, expression? Tell me. They have not joined the table. Yes, yes. We are not join any. We are not mention any joining condition, right? So we should mention. Uh, What is the joining condition? B dot F I D. F I D means booking table. Yeah, X equals to F I D. F कहाँ गया? A F X equals to A and for hmm. this uh, we should specify P dot P I D. Passengers P I D means P equals P to, to A. A. Yeah, so this condition is missing here. Right, so that's why it is not correct. So correct option is option C. But suppose if I didn't mention joining condition, then what will give us this one? There is no joining condition. It means it will perform the cross join, right? If I give you this particular expression, tell me like what what is the output of this particular expression? Since we are not mentioned any joining condition here, so all the three tables will perform the cross join, right? Then we are projecting P and R. Hello. We have, uh, but we have given name equals to indigo and this. It will yeah, take so, only that percentage. Yeah, yeah. Only that table. It will that table uh, rows. It will filter based on the condition. But first, it will perform the cross join in all the three tables. Oh yes. Then applying mm -hmm. based on this particular condition, it will Mama. project P and R, right? So that's is that's the one thing. So remember this. So if you are not mentioning any condition, there is no cross join. So you can also say like in previous case, if it is instead of cross join, it is just cross. Then we don't need to specify the joining condition here, right? Like this. So I will suggest you to watch the that tutorial, TRC and DRC tutorial in week four. So that will give us an overall idea. So any doubt in this part, TRC and DRC or relational algebra expression? No, sir. Okay. So please try to solve the uh, questions. Uh, in tutorial itself, I have given five questions. So yeah, you can watch that tutorial. That will be good. Yeah. So that's the case. You need practice for that. But remember the the two important thing is that the joining condition. Okay. And this thing you should know, like this should be in particular sequence. Then what is P? What is Q from the original uh, schema, right? So that few things you should know. Okay, so that's it. Now that is our relational algebra, TRC, DRC. Now the next topic's important topic is relation. Sorry, 
ER diagram part. Okay, so these are a few symbols. Uh, it's very important. Please note this that rectangle is used to indicate the entity class, then double rectangles, weak entity class, diamond relationship, then identifying relationship type is uh, by double and diamond, then attribute ellipse. Key attribute is basically a, a primary key or any uh, primary keys, right? Indicated by ellipse with a line. And discriminator partial key means the key associated with the weak entity set. So weak entity set key is denoted by a underline with a discriminant uh, like a ellipse. Then derived attributes is dotted ellipse. So for example, age is derived attribute. We are deriving it from date of birth, right? Then multi order attribute is there. Then composite attribute, for example, uh, say full name. So full name consists of first name and uh, last name, right? If we have one more that is middle name also we can include. So full name is basically a composite attribute, right? So multi order attribute is for example, phone number, like student can have multiple phone number, right? So please remember these symbols, it will help you to solve the questions. Sir, what is this identifying relationship type? Okay. Okay, let me discuss this first uh, because uh, it will require the concept of this constant. Okay, sir. I have a huh? Yes. So for this uh, composite attribute, huh? uh, we need three table, uh, right? Table? No, this is attribute, na? column. In that, suppose in a student table, uh, we want to store the name of a student which is having first name middle name last name then we can have three separate column for that okay okay, okay yeah so what is the discriminator partial keys can you give an example yes i i will discuss that because when we discuss this identifying relationship i will discuss with that also okay okay yeah. but let me discuss this mapping constant first so mapping constant or we can say cardinality is also so here arrow indicates one if there is no arrow, no arrow, then it is many. Okay. So here you can say instructor and student having many to many relationship with the advisor. So we are relationship advisor. Now, if there is no arrow, it means uh, many. So it is n is to n, right? So what is many to many here? Suppose let us consider this example. Say so there are four instructor I1, I2, I3, I4, and we have students S1, S2, S3. So instructor can have multiple student and student can have multiple instructor that is many to many right so i1 can be an advisor of s1 also s2 also similarly i2 can be advisor of s3 also s1 also similarly student can have two advisors also i1 also and i2 also this is many to many relationship right so there are uh, student can have multiple instructors as an advisor or instructor can have a multiple student right that is many to many relationship Okay, now what about one to many relationship? So arrow indicates one and there is no error, it indicates many. Okay, so that is one is two n. And this one is at most one. Okay, so this is at most one means it can take zero also, right? So here you can see i3, i4, it is not associated with any of the student, that is also fine, right? Because n will also indicate zero to n, zero to n. Here, zero to one, two n, so zero to one, two n, right? That is at most one. Now, in this case, what will happen? We have instructors i1 i2 i3 i4 and same example say s1 s2 s3 now what i am saying one to many from instructor to student side right so uh, one instructor can have multiple students so i i1 can have s1 also i1 can have s2 also right similarly i2 can have s3 also but uh, Multiple students should not have many to one, right? So many instructor can have one instructor. This is, is possible. S1, S2 is uh, having advisor I1. But I2 is inst instructor advisor for S1. This is not possible, right? Because it will violate the constraint. It will become many to many then, right? Hello? Any doubt in this part? No, sir. Okay. So this is not possible in this case and same goes for many to one. So if we read from this side, it is many to one. Same example we can consider. Okay. Sir, uh, in this uh, advisor one to many relationship, hmm. so because there's an arrow, it will mean one only. 
at most one so in, like there may can be instructor who don't have any student right so i3 i4 so zero yeah same reverse goes for these things right it will be a instructor it will be a student now what happens one to one mini like one to one relationship one is to one now here see there is i1 there is i2 there is i3 there is i4 then we have s1 s2 s3 so one instructor can advise only one student i1 i2 i2 uh, i s2 i3 s3 but there possible that i4 don't have any student or there can be possible that s4 don't have any advisor also so it is also possible but instructor can advise only one student and student can have only one advisor so that is one to one that is simple right and there can be like uh, instructor also who don't have any advisor so that is one to one relationship now what is total and part partial participation now this double line indicates total participation and this single line indicates partial participation so whatever we have discussed this many to one one to many one to one that is all a partial participation because here you can see i4 don't have any student and student also don't have any instructor but in the case of uh, total and partial participation what happens let's take same example i1 i2 i3 i4 then we have student s1 s2 s3 now in this case every student every student should ha must have advisor okay that is total participation so i s1 must have uh, i1 it's not like i1 only but every student can have must have advisor so it can be multiple advisors also but here we are saying every student must have an advisor that is total participation if there is one more student that is s4 he also should have advisor okay that is total participation so every entity in this particular entity set should have an an associate entity with other entity set right that is total participation and partial participation you can know suppose in this set there is i5 instead of i not have any student student that is fine but it is many to many total and partial participation right if we indicate this arrow like this then it will become many to one but there will be total uh, participation okay so that depends okay any any doubt till now say so, so like student will definitely have a instructor, instructor as a, a advisor right in the total participation and the total yep. participation you have both one to one and many to many also no yes we can have that suppose if i draw one more line here then total participation from this side also right then every instructor also should have student as a advisor so, as a student right so i5 must have some student right then in that case i5 should have some student that is the uh, total participation and this cardinality will go like this only for many to many one to many like this only okay any doubt till now like mapping concern and this er diagram symbols i will come to that this particular example of identifying relationship so any any doubt composite sorry you are not audible sir i am hello ha ah, yes tell me sir how to show composite key in a diagram composite key yes at in a diagram composite attribute This is composite attribute, na? Yes, sir. But in a table form. In a table, okay. In a table, we can we are only storing the uh, branches of. There will be three columns: middle name, first name, last name. We are not storing this full name. I will take simply one example. Okay, this is your doubt. So, say this is student, right? And we have this as full name, and we have. first name and this we have last name right and we have say one more attribute say age so while creating a student table what you can do student first name comma last name okay there will be two column and then age right we don't have column for full name instead of we has uh, we are going to store the uh, branches of the attribute full name and last name okay So that's the thing. Now we'll discuss one example uh, for identifying. Ah, uh, yes. And if we want to make a composite key, like a two key, a primary key. Like two key, a primary key. So yes. in the attribute, uh, in the underline, you can mention two attributes. Uh, or like yeah, like this. Suppose first name and last name, like first name underline, last name underline. 
because because table can have only one primary key, right? So we can say that the combination of these two will be a composite primary key. And sir, in a table, like uh, if there is table, only. if there no is diagram. table, then no diagram. Only table. Like uh, we use a key thing, na, for making primary key. Huh. So uh, while so defining the table, how to uh, say like no, like composite no. primary key? Uh, in yes, sir. In a like we have to use two uh, primary key as. No, no. So while defining a table, you can use primary key inside the bracket. Then the, what are the attributes you want to use? Like first name, comma last name, right? So it will be a composite primary key. While defining a table, you can use like this. Okay, so let's move on to this example. Like identifying relationship weak entity and this discriminator. Okay. Now suppose, uh, suppose, ha, huh. suppose we have employee, right? And he is purchasing insurance policy. Okay, so insurance policy is a relationship, but. when we when we are purchasing any insurance policy we need to give nominee also right and for example see suppose we have one more entity is a nominee but we can have nominee only when employee purchases the insurance policy right otherwise we cannot have this nominee so this nominee is completely depend on this employee entity right when your employee will purchase insurance policy at time at that time only nominee will come right so there may be an employee who don't a purchase insurance policy so there nominee is like, like uh, no need to store because it is not related to insurance policy right so in that case what we can see this nominee is a weak entity said because this depends on the strong entity that is employee right unless employee purchase insurance policy we cannot have nominee so that's why this weak this is called weak entity said and the relationship which is used to identifying this uh, weak entity said it is known as the Identifying relationship that is weak identifying relationship indicated by double rectangle and there must be total participation no because every nominee should have the employee right this is what we are saying na nominee is dependent on employee because this is a weak entity set and every nominee should have employee right so that's how total participation is there and uh, uh, for uh, representing the weak entity class we use this identifying relationship type that is indicated by double uh, double diamond shape and this is employee. and if we have employee id as a primary key here so we can indicate an uh, ellipse with the employee underscore id as a primary key but here if you say if you want to mention nominee id nominee underscore id then we can use dotted line okay because it is belong to a weak entity set so only difference between this key attribute and partial key is that this partial key is belong to a weak entity set then this key attribute belong to a strong entity set that is uh, entity class Okay, that's the only difference. So, how do we know that an entity is weak or strong? How we know? Yeah. So, this double uh, rectangle indicates weak entity. No, 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 no. not on the on the notational point of view, mm -hmm. but in real sense, how do we know that an entity is? So that will depend on the like problem statement or requirement also. Like for insurance policy, requirement is like this only, right? Unless employee purchase employee or any other person purchase insurance, we cannot have the nominee, right? How we can store the nominee record? But when when someone purchases the insurance policy, then only we can store the nominee, right? So okay. it depends on uh, like requirement and case study, or like yeah. So this is a developer's decision, is it? Yes, when... this is this comes under uh, database design process, ER ER model. Okay. Once we have the requirement or problem statement, then we try to form ER model. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So that's the case. I hope you understand this example. Okay. Any doubt is ER diagram Just symbols and mapping. Discriminator partial key is not clear. Very clear. No, here. No, discriminator partial key. No, this is this is discriminator partial key, na? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ellipse indicated by dotted line. Okay. Indicated by dotted line, but where to use that one? It for weak entity, entity set. Entity class, na? No? Yeah, for weak entity class only. Uh, is it a primary key in the weak yes, entity yes. class? Yes, it is a primary key. Yeah, primary key of weak entity class. Oh, okay. because there may be it's a class, is it? Class. 
entity we generate different class basically this entity yeah like we are uh, creating a tables like in a relation oh. uh, yeah. so i hope you understand examples uh, then yeah the diagram we have discussed mapping constraint we have discussed now let us take one this last question for uh, week 4 then we'll move on to week 5 and week 6 now yeah this is the here yeah, diagram patient appointment uh, has book appointed by doctor this much attribute total participation week entity set identify relationship type this is one this is one this is many and this is many right now tell me which one is correct if you understand uh, previous two slides then you should be able to answer this so first is the minimum number of table required to enter the set is two we'll discuss after what uh, let's see appointed underscore by is many to many relationship set between doctors to appoint is it correct this to this is many to many no sir it is many to one right from appointment to doctor and from yes. doctor to appointment this one to many right yes yeah this is not correct what about has book correct yeah has book has one to many relationship from patient to appointment this one is correct mm. right now the fourth option is this is visible fourth one the set of attributes for a table appointment is uh this appointment id patient id doctor id and here i guess this appointment id patient id doctor id is underlined okay now tell me it, it is correct is it correct yes sir yes sir yes sir okay yes, sir. now tell me the schema for patient table patient table okay how many tables we required minimum tables required to represent this sir 3 3 which one Three. No, no, patient we cannot find one. Doctor. Yeah, first one is patient, then appointment, then doctor. Okay. Then what are the attributes of patient? Sir, we patient uh, ID. Yes, the, all name, all name, this right. Number, yeah. All this attribute, but patient ID is the key here, right? Yes. Same goes for doctor. All the attribute, but doctor ID is the key. Mm -hmm. But what about appointment? Appointment in order to ensure this is weak entity set, right? Yes, sir. So we'll have these two attribute. So appointment ID, which is the primary key for this appointment table, indicated by dotted line. Then we have date underscore time also. Then we have this. The okay, primary right? keys yeah. of the primary keys of patient ID and doctor ID, right? Uh, doctor ID, yes. Yeah, and this will be also like composite primary key in this case. Yes, yes. So it will be all, all three together, right? Yeah, all three together. Patient, doctor, date, time. Yes. Uh, patient underscore ID, then doctor underscore ID. This will be the composite mm. primary key. No, like the appointment ID. Same, same date patient. Time. No, no, like the, the same patient and doctor can have multiple appointments. Yes. That is why we have. No, so see, a patient cannot have two appointments with the same doctor at the same time, right? Patient cannot have two appointments with the uh -huh. doctor at the same date and time. With the same doctor. Yeah. Yeah, with the same doctor. Yes, that is correct. Right. So P one so is the patient. Then the composite prime unique key. Uh, or the uniqueness is a combination of patient id doctor id and date and time appointment id is just used as a convenience for making it a primary key mm. right is that correct no, no no so we have to see the mapping cardinal id also like a patient like one patient can book multiple appointment here right it is one to many and if you read here doctors can have also have multiple appointment na No, one that doctor is can have. That, that is correct. See, what, see, if you look at a uh, one patient can have a appointment with a doctor any number of times in a day. Correct? Any number of appointment. Yes, in a day. Ah, ah. But at the same time, mm -hmm. can they have more than one appointment physically? I guess in the database, the record can be two. 
So I could put, technically have appointment ID one, patient ID one, doctor ID one, and twelve PM. Hmm, I can one. have second record, which is appointment ID two, patient ID one, doctor ID one, oh, and so and date time twelve PM. I can have. I mean, as per this diagram, I can have that. Correct. As per this diagram, you can have that, right? Right. But physically, right. that is not possible. I mean, it doesn't make sense. The yeah, but but work. this will ensure the mapping cardinalities, right? Huh? Physically, it will not make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But for this particular example, uh, like it will take all the possible uh, inputs, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So that's thing about the year diagram part. So we have four tutorials See, in this week. Can someone confirm? Uh, yes. Hello. Any doubt? Okay. So in this week we have four tutorials. Okay, please watch all the tutorials. So in one of the tutorials we have discussed ERC DRC. In second tutorial we have discussed the case study on ER diagram. In third tutorial we have discussed how to convert the ER diagrams into a relational schema. And yeah, one more tutorial is there. You can watch. I think I think three or four is there. Okay, you can watch it. That will give a clear idea. Okay. So that's it from week four. Any doubt in week four? Anyone? Okay, so you should know like. Uh, is yes. this session being recorded? This is recorded. It is on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Sir, how to identify the tables? Uh, how many tables? In this case, how to uh, how to identify three tables? Okay, so like you need to understand what are the mapping cardinalities here, right? So we have one to many, then uh, from patient to appointment side, and we have many to one from appointment to doctor side, right? I can use one. A table to represent patient. I can use one table to represent doctor. But what about appointment? Because if I I need to ensure that uh, every patient uh, can book multiple appointment, right? With the multiple doctors, right? So that how will you ensure that for for that you need to create one more table such as appointment having this uh, this attribute, right? Okay. Yeah. For that I will recommend you to watch the tutorials. In that we have discussed step wise. So it is little complicated, but. We have taken two entities, then three entities, then four entities. Then we have discussed that. Okay, so okay. please watch the tutorial first. So that's the thing. Uh, let me check. Uh, just a second. Yeah. So it is live on YouTube. I will share the link in the chat. Okay, so that's about uh, first four weeks. Uh, we'll go then week five and week six. So week five deals with functional dependency concept, All right? Then we have if we know functional dependency concept, when we should know how to find out the closure, then we should know how to find out a uh, candidate key. Super key, right? We should know how to check candidate key super key. Then we have discussed what are the content? Yeah, decomposition is there. Lastly and lastless decomposition. Then we have concept of canonical cover. Then we have dependency preservation, right? Dependency preserving. Preserving. Then this is for week five and week six. We have normalization. Normalization concept is there. So are you writing something? Yes, I am writing. It is not visible. This slide. No sir. Huh? Not visible. After canonical cover, there is nothing written. The dependency preserving and this normalization I have written. Not that is not visible. It's only showing the okay. canonical cover, sir. Okay, let me present again. Sir, you are going to continue. Ha, huh, yes. It will it's take stopped. one more hour. So it's clashing with some other class. So, anyway, yeah. you are recording this one. Right? Yes, it is live on YouTube. You can watch it afterward also, not an issue. Right. So this is normalization. Now visible, right? Yes. Yeah. So in this, we have discussed about first normal form, second normal form, third NF, then BCNF, then we have four NF, 
right that's about week 5 and week 6 so what is functional dependency yes tell me if i said f a determines b then a determines b tell me what is a determines me, b means Va value b of depends, b depends on it yeah it means a uniquely value, value of I, b is uniquely identified by ha huh. so if i say a1 is uh, like determines b1 then a1 should determines b1 only right a1 should, should not determine b2 it will violate the concept of functional dependency that's a sim simple thing and how to find out the closure suppose uh, we have this functional dependency set a determine b b determine c c determine f and f determine say b then what is the closure of say b how to find out the closure of b so, so it follow the dependencies of c yeah, b it will itself cover b right then from b i can get c so i can add c from c i can get get f so i can write f and from f i can get b so it already is there right so bcf is the uh, closure of uh, b similarly like composite closure you can say for a b closure will be a b then from b i will get c f like this right so this is a composite closure so you should know the concept of functional dependency you should know how to find the closure in order to find out the candidate key right now let us take one example okay so here it is total number of super keys we need to find out but at first we'll find out candidate key okay now tell me what is candidate key here how to find out candidate key so we like uh, so in the, the right side uh, yes so, which is not the concept of key in the, in the case of like functional dependence is that if, if you take the closure of any key it should give me all the attribute present in the relation r right that is the basic uh, concept of uh, key in the case of functional dependency but here if you see like i need to check like okay if i take the closure of u then i am getting r if i get the take a closure of v w x y z similarly you need to repeat the process because there can be multiple candidates key right so you need to repeat the process for each of the attribute but one thing you can try that there is one trick that you need to find out what which are the attribute which is not a uh, which is not present on the right hand side of any functional dependency so v x is present so v and x is present w is also present u is also present z is also present so y is not present right then y must be a part of candidate key y must be a part of candidate key so what are the attribute which is not present on the right hand side of any functional dependency that must be a part of candidate key right now how to check whether y is a candidate key or not for that simply take the closure of y based on the functional dependency tell me what is the closure of y y is y is right we are not getting all the attributes right yeah. then you need to take the combinations of y with all other attributes say y u is there y v y w y x and y z now take the closure of each of the combinations so what we'll get y u tell me Oh, what happened? Y W will be accurate. Yeah. So Y U. Uh, y U only, right? Z also. Yes. So if we take Y V. Then y v then from y I will get z from v I will get u, right? And from v I will get u from u am I getting anything? No. So this is not a key, right? What about y w? Y w from w I will get v x 
from x i will get w from v i will get u and from y i will get z so i am i am getting all the attribute present in the relation r right so this is my one of the candidate key now what about y x so y x and from x i am getting w if i have y w already in my closure but y w is already a key so i can say i will all get i will get all the attribute present in the relation r so this is also my key okay now what about y z we'll get y z only right so we have two key here okay that is y w and y x any doubt up till now anyone no sir okay so we have two key okay so there are two candidates key y v and y w then how to find out super keys here So how we are sure that only two are there candidate keys? Sorry, how we are sure that only two candidate keys are there? No, see, first we find out. Okay, this attribute is not present on the right hand side of any functional dependency. Then yes. y must be a part of candidate key, right? Yes. Then we take the combination of y with every attribute. So we find out. Okay, only this attribute is giving us. So what are other combinations are remaining? Y. So two combination of two attribute is done. So if you take the combination of y x with any other attribute, it will give us all the relations, right? All the attributes. So that will be a super key. But if you see, I can also consider y, u, v, see? w. Super key is uh, y w and y x, right? Yeah, this is super key candidate key also. Yeah. So like y v is not there, right? Y v, okay. Y w is there, okay. Y w, y w and y x, right? Yeah. So if you take the combination of this y u v w also, still we will not get all the attributes. So y u v w from w no w is there. It will it will be a super key. Sorry. So yeah. If we take the closure of y u v. Now let us check. Are we getting the all the attributes? Tell me. V say u. No right. So yeah. You can try. There there are only two keys. But you need to check for other possible combinations also, which is not covered. Okay, along with the y. So that the case. Sir, so but, here. Uh, but but every super key must contain a candidate key, right? Yeah. So every super key is candidate key, right? Every super key is candidate key, but reverse is not true. So this is super key also. Yeah, but if, like. Hmm? Uh, but 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 a super key which is not a candidate key must contain a candidate key as part of it. Ah uh, yes, like combination of candidate key with any other attribute will be a super key, na? So y w with any we, other attribute, we, say you. So we don't we don't need to check y u v or something, right? No no no. Once we get y w, you don't need to consider combination of y w with any other attribute. You can check y combination of y with remaining attributes. So w x we don't need to consider. You can check with v. So y u, then we have v, then we have z. Okay. You can check the closure of this. Right, so I think we'll get this much only. Yeah. Sir, so, so, um, in y u v, we will uh for the closure of that we will have x in that, right? For which? Y u v. Ah, uh, how x will come? X will come only when we have w, right? W is not present here. But v x are given together. Does it mean when v comes, x will come? Here. Yeah. No, no. It's not like that. Okay. That's but the least, but the closure will be y u v z right? Y u v z yes, because from y I'm getting z. Uh, even if you take the closure of y u v z, you will not get any other things. So that's the thing. You can try it out. Once you practice, you will get to know. Because why? If you remember, while finding out the closure of Uh, y v we got got this closure right. If you take the closure of y v, what is the closure of y v? Y v z only right and u only right. So if I take the closure of y v, I am not getting all the attributes. Even if you take the closure of this much attributes, you will not going to get the relations are right. So you don't need to consider. So if you practice enough, you will get to know. Okay, if I take the closure of y v, I am not getting any uh, like all the uh, relations like attribute. But what is missing here? Which are the attributes missing? W is missing. X is missing, right? 
so if i add wx then i make it but if you take the combination of 3 to any of this in from the yv closure you will you are not going to get all any other attribute right are you getting my point if the closure of yv is giving me yvz u i don't need to take the closure of yv yz or yv u or yz u right i don't need to check because it's anyway that closure will co consist of this much attributes only right so basically yes. closure of yv is yu yv z u and the closure of this only itself na right so we don't need to check for the combination of this thing you need to see which are the attributes are remaining okay so from that concept only we can apply one trick that okay whether the attribute is not part of our uh, functional dependency right hand side of functional dependency that must be a part of candidate key right so please try to practice you will get to know but yeah i think you understand right so once we get the candidate key then we need to find out the number of super keys how to find out number of super keys if you remember the quiz to revision session i have discussed this so yes. watch quiz to revision session one uh, it's went for three three plus hours and i have discussed week five and week six for three hours only so you can watch that uh, in detail okay so very good examples i have discussed in that session so here if you got two candidates keys uh, this y w and y x so how to find out super key just tell me so they themselves should be super keys as well yeah and so uh, basically super key is basically a combination of candidate key with any other attribute right so same logic we can apply if i consider y w as my candidate key okay if i consider y w as my candidate key and how many possible combinations will be there with the y w and rest of the remaining attributes that i need to consider so there is one formula to the power n minus m so n is total number of attributes in a relation okay total number of attributes in relation m is total number of attribute in the candidate key in candidate key right in candidate key so here in this case m is 2 and our n is 6 right Sir, so based on this candidate key i will have 2 to the power 6 minus 2 super keys so that will be 16 right Sir, m is 3 m is total number of attributes in the candidate key i am considering only one candidate key at this time y w only Sir, so First, what happens to y x Oh, that we also consider first what we are saying first let me find out what are the possible super keys based on this candidate key then let me find out what are the number of possible keys based on this candidate key right but in that in both the case there will be some common attributes also na? common common cases also like for example y v u will come in y w also and y x w u will also come in this y z y x also right so that we have to subtract so that we need to apply one formula that is a intersection b what is the formula minus a union b right same thing we are applying here first we are finding out the number of super key based on candidate key 1 number of super keys based on candidate key 2 then we are subtracting the common candidate key based on the attributes y w and x okay yeah, so we are calculating a union b a union b yeah right so here in this case y w it will be example uh, like in based on candidate key 1 to the power 6 minus 2 that is 16 same for candidate key for y z sorry y x it will be to the power 6 minus 2 16 only now what what i want to find out there may be some possible uh, like overlapping between these two right say for example y w x will come here also and y x w will come here also right so we need to subtract such combinations so for that we need to consider the total number of like combination of both the candidate keys so here in this case i will get three attributes so y w x right now based on y w x how many possible uh, super keys are possible to the power 6 minus 3 so that will be 8 right so if i apply this formula 16 plus 16 minus 8 so it will give me 
24, right? So there will be total 24 super keys. Any doubt in this part, anyone? You can watch this quiz two sessions. So I have uh, discussed multiple cases also for super keys. But first find out candidate key, then based on candidate key, find out number of super keys for the particular candidate key, and then the combination of the candidate key. Okay, then we need to subtract that. So that's the case. Anyone any doubt in this part? Okay, right. So this is candidate key super key we have discussed. What is decomposition? Lossless decomposition, lossy decomposition. What are the conditions for decomposition? Lossless decomposition condition. Suppose I want to decompose relation R into R1 and R2. Then what are the condition? Just tell me. There are three conditions, right? Hello? R1 R equal to R1 union R2. Ah, so first condition is R must be equal to R1 union R2. The like attributes of R1 union R2 must be equal to attributes of R. Then next R1 intersection R2 must not, not be equal empty to set. empty set. And third condition is R1 intersection R2 give R1 or R2. R2, right? Means I need to select. The common attribute such that it should be a key of R1 or R2, right? If we apply if we apply these two conditions together, so there must be some common attribute between R1 and R2 such that it must be a key of either R1 or R2, right? So that is the lossless decomposition condition. Let us discuss one example based on that. Yeah. Uh, is this visible, this question? Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Now this is the relation. Uh, These are the functional dependencies. We have decomposed this relation R into R1, R2, R3, R4. We need to find out R5 such that the R5 decomposition must be lossless. Okay, and it should be in BCNF first. So let us discuss the uh, BCNF condition first. Then we'll come back to this question. Okay, so this is lossless, uh, sorry, uh, decomposition part. Then we have canonical cover. So we'll discuss, like we already discussed this. So the uh, third condition, R1 intersection R2 is R1 or R2. Uh -huh. It's like, uh, what was this? So suppose we have two relations, a decomposed relation. This is A, B, C, and this is say B, D, E. And my original relation is A, B, C, D, E, okay? So the intersection must not be an empty set. So here intersection is not an empty set. But what are the common attributes is there? Like for R1 intersection R2, in this case, it will be B, right? Then that B must be a key of either R1 or R2. So if I take the closure of those uh, attribute or set of attribute, I should get either R1 or R2. Okay, okay? Okay. So that we'll discuss. And dependency preservation also concept uh, we'll see with the help of question. Now let's try to discuss first normalization. So there are different normal forms. So what is the condition for first NF, one NF? Tell me. Atomic. Yeah. It should have atomic domain of the attribute should be atomic or no multi-valued attribute, right? No multi-valued attribute. Just one minute, I will come back. Yeah, so the condition for 1NF is there should be no multi or attribute. Now what about 2NF? Yes, no, tell partial. Me. no partial, partial dependency, right? 
So what is partial dependency? Prime attribute to non-prime attribute. Prime attribute? To non-prime attribute. Yeah, non-prime attribute. Suppose like for checking any normal form, first you need to find out candidate key, okay? Then you should know what are the prime attribute and non-prime attribute, right? And what are the prime attribute? The attribute which are the part of candidate key that, that are prime attribute, right? So attributes which are the part of candidate key that are my prime attributes and rest are non-prime non attribute, okay? Remaining attributes. Now what is partial dependency is there? Suppose I have this functional dependency x determine a, right? And now this x is basically a subset of candidate key. That is basically my prime attribute, subset of candidate key, right? You, you directly cannot say prime attribute because if we consider key also, that will also be a prime attribute, right? Combination of prime attributes. The subset of candidate key is determining non-prime attribute. If this condition exists in my functional dependency, then I can say there is partial dependency and this is, this is not allowed in 2NF. So for example, my candidate key is y, w, x, okay? And we have x, y, z, w, x, y, z as a four attribute. Suppose I am having this w, x determining z. If this functional dependency exists, then this is a partial dependency because w, x is a part of candidate key. That is subset of candidate key and z is a non-prime attribute, right? So this y w x is my prime attribute and z is non-prime attribute. If this functional dependency exists or even y determines z or w determines z right, or x determines z or any combination of any attribute determines z exists, then it will be considered as my partial dependency and that is not allowed in 2NF, right? So there should not be any partial dependency. So subset of candidate key should, should not determine non-prime attribute. That is the uh, partial dependency, right? If it is there, then we can say it is not in 2NF, right? Any doubt in partial dependency part? No. So what about 3NF? Non-prime attribute should not give non-prime attribute. Yes. So 3NF condition is there is no transitive dependency, right? No transitive dependency. Now, what is transitive dependency? If in my functional dependency set, there is non-prime attribute determining another non-prime attribute, then I can say there is transitive dependency and this is not allowed in 3NF. So if this functional dependency exists, then I can say there is, uh, the my relation is not in 3NF. Or in this case, let us consider only YW is my primary key, right? Candidate key, sorry. Then now my non-prime attributes will be Z and X. And my prime attribute will be, sorry, Z and X. My prime attribute will be Y and W. And comma. So if my functional dependency exists like X determine Z or Z determine X, then this is a violation of 3NM because it is a transitive dependency. Non-prime attribute determining another non-prime attribute, right? So this is not allowed in 3NF. It is no transitive dependency. Okay. And now what about BCNF? What is the required condition? Left hand side should be yeah. uh, should left hand side of any every functional dependency must be a key, right? It must be a key. Every left hand side of every functional dependency must be a key. If there are three functional dependencies, then for all the three functional dependencies, left hand side must be a key. That is my BCNF. If any of the condition does not meet, then I can say okay. But for a BCNF, it should be first in three NF. Okay, it should be. First in 3NF, for 3NF it should be in first 2NF and for 2NF it should be first in 1NF, okay. So when I said my relation is in BCNF, it means it is in 3NF, 2NF, 1NF also, right? So this is a BCNF condition. Okay, so what is remaining? 4NF, so 4NF so means... BCNF uh, was like what? Uh, left hand side of every functional dependency must be a key. Okay. And for that, it should be in 3NF first, right? So there should be no partial dependency, no transitive dependency. So non-prime every... attribute should not uh, uh -huh. determine non-prime 
these three conditions should satisfied first and then also one more condition is that left hand side of every functional dependency must be a key okay so that is the key right does not matter whatever uh, attributes are here so left hand side of any uh, functional dependency must be a key that is my bcnf and for that it should be in 3nf 2nf 1nf first now what about 4nf there is no no my Multi value dependency here, okay. Multi value dependency like A multi determine B should not be there. So, there is different concept for this. I have discussed this in quiz 2 session. You can watch it. We will solve just one example. But for that, if you want to understand in detail, you can watch that session. So, that's about the normalization part. Now, let's go back to this question. So here, need, here we need to find R5 such that my decomposition must be lossless and it should be in BCNF, right? <clears throat> now, how to check whether the decomposition is lossless or not for uh, like we have five decomposed relation. Till Rn, okay. So here we have five, so R5, we consider, okay. So, R should be equal to R1 union, R2 union, R3 union, R4 union, R5, okay. So, let us check. First condition, AD is present, EF is present, GH is present, BC is present. So, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all attributes are present. So, my first condition is satisfying. Now, we need to check the we need to take the combination of any two decomposed relation and see whether it's satisfying my condition or not, right? For that, we need to consider the combination of two decomposed relations such that there must be some common attribute, right? So, for example, if I take R1, R2, there is D in common attribute, right? So, I can say R1 intersection R2 is equals to D. Now, whether this D is giving me R1 or R2, that we need to check. So for that, just take the closure of D and try to check whether this D is giving me R1 or R2. So based on the closure of uh, functional dependency, this set, what is the closure of D? DEF. DEF, right? So this is my R1. Yes, it is giving me R1. So this condition is satisfied for R1, R2. So what I can say, say I am joining these two relations R1 to such that R1 union R2 equals to a D E F. Okay. Now uh, G H is common. Okay. Let's take R three R four. Sir, what do you write? Uh, like R one to say, like. So okay. So, so like... my condition is getting satisfied for R one and R two. Like my lost is decomposed condition, right? It means I can join these two table. Right. So basically, what lossless will indicate? If I decompose this relation R into R1 into R2 into R3, and again I am decomposing this R3 into R4 and R5. So if I join this R3, R4, I should get R3. If I join R1, R3, R2, I should get R, right? So you wrote some G or something, right? G. Is it ADEF? No, R12 is R1 union R2. Say R12 equals to R1 union okay, R2. Just Let second. us consider R12 equals to R1 union R2 because you are joining these two decomposed relation. So we'll get one new table, right? After performing joining operation, right? Now R1 mm -hmm. and 2 is covered. Now check for R3 and R4. So R3 intersection R4, any common attributes is there? G, right? Now, whether G is giving me R3 or R4, yes. From If I take the closure of G, I am getting GH, which is my R3. So, again, I can consider R3, 4 as R3 union R4. So, that will be my B, C, G, H. Right? Now, let us consider R1 to R3, 4. So, A, D, E, F, B, C, G, H. So R12 intersection R34. Because ultimately what I want R1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And it should give me all the attributes. 
So now let us take R12 intersection R34. What is common? B, C, G, and here A, D, E, F. What is common attribute here? No common, right? No, yeah. So now I need to add R5 such that if I uh, add R5, then I will get the lossless decomposition, right? That is my question. Now, now, up till now, if you got through, you can just go through option wise, right? Or what you can do? Sir, A, B, G, H. Sorry? So like yeah. we, we, had, we had to add some key or something, right? Yes, yes. So if you remember in the quiz 2 session, I have discussed that. Like if, if you are decomposing this relation, say R1 to R2, R3, R, R4, and you are satisfying all the functional dependency uh, constant, like uh, dependencies preserving lossless, sorry, uh, it isn't BC enough, like what is the required normal form, but you are not getting a decomposition lossless. And what you can do, you can add one more relations R4, such that it must be a candidate key, right? So here, what we have done, we have checked R12 intersection R4, which is empty set. So what I can say, I can add one more decomposed relation, sorry, relation such that it must be a candidate key, not candidate key, super key also, right? Must be a key. So if I add any key, super key or candidate key, then R12, R34, and then this R5 will be my lossless decomposition. Okay. So at first you should find out what is the candidate key for relation R? Now, what is candidate key for relation R? A, B, H. A, B, H. Yeah, A, A, B, H. And A, B, G also. Hmm. Right? Because from G, I am getting H, right? Yes, and B, H is giving C, G. Yeah. So, A, B, H and A, B, G is my candidate key here. So I can use any one of the candidate key here. So that will give me a lossless decomposition. And candidate key itself is a BCNF, right? Hmm. So suppose we have one relation, say A, B, C, D, and we don't have any functional dependency applicable to this relation. So in that case, what will it be my key? Yeah, in that yeah. case, what will be Maybe. my key? The combination that of I, all the attributes, yeah. right? A, B, C, D will be my key and that will be always in B, C, N, F because all attributes is a part of my candidate key, right? So here you can see, I need, I can add candidate key here such that because it, it's already in B, C, N, F. So, so A, B, H. We'll, we'll still have to check for uh, 4, N, F in this condition as well. 4, N, F is not, it's B, C, N, F we are asking here, right? Okay. So A, B, H I can add, yeah. So if I add A, B, H or A, B, G, H, because this is this will become my super key, right? But still, it will give me a lossless decomposition, right? No, A B H or A B G. Okay, so there are three options. If I add A, C, or D, I will get lossless decomposition, right? So this condition is satisfied for option A, C, and D because this is super key, na? This is candidate key. This is candidate key. This is super key, right? Even if I take this as a key here, R five here. I will get a lossless decomposition, but it should be in BCNF also, right? Now, if you consider ABH and ABG, it is in BCNF. Now, see whether ABGH in BCNF or not. Here, you can see G determine H via functional dependencies applicable to this relation R, right? And we have any other functional dependency? BH determines G also, right? Yes. From here, I can say BH determines C by decomposition rule, right? Yes. So let me write in a proper way. Okay, uh, till this, you understood why three options will be possible for lossless? Hello? Yes, sir, because you said BC and F. Yeah. Yeah, so it must be a key, and that is the yeah. case. Yeah. So for a lossless, if you add any of the three options, it will be lossless, but it should be in BCNF. 
and since this is the key it's it is always in vcna but this option four we need to check because it's an msq question right so a b g h g determine h is there b h determine g is present right so what is the key here g h so a b will be my key right so left hand side of functional dependence is not the key left hand side is functional dependence is not the key so it violates my b c n of condition right yes yeah so that's why this option is not correct only option okay. a and option c is correct okay so that is like it should so uh, we have to add uh, add a candidate key in yes in this like, case like we need, you can add candidate key because after uh, taking intersection there is an empty set right and mm -hmm. suppose if there is one more common attribute say for example let's take let's take one example uh, because like don't relate to this but say for example uh, where is r34 yeah this r34 right bcgh so i am adding here a in that right now in this case a will be my common attribute right because a is already present in r12 right so in this case a will be my common attribute now if i take the closure of a am i getting r12 or r34 let us take consider from a d e f right i am getting r12 right yes sir yeah so here it's already lossless i don't need to write but there may be say case say d if i d then i will get d e f d e f is a key now let us add d so if i consider d here the closure of d will be d e f only right i am not getting r12 or r34 yes so in order to get that i can add one more relation such that it should give me a lossless join and that will be a key right so you can add any key you can add adf also so yeah that will be but yeah but i think you got the concept right for lossless uh, there, there are three possibilities and for we say no we need to check right so that is the case so Since you have to if there is something common we we still have to add some key yes yes and we have to check that it is in there it is, is in bcna yeah for this the yeah, def is there uh, because there is no common attribute suppose for example we have only bg in the closure we can simply add a here right so that will be of course possible so it depends like so so we can add any we can add any key we can add abh abg and we still be you okay. can add key of r12 or r34 here as a fifth relation or if it is not then you can simply add a candidate key okay okay yeah so like for exam uh, you can directly because lossless composition decompose is possible in many way but you can directly check for bc enough so you can directly ignore this so even if you go for this condition only you can ignore this option still you need to check for this three right so yeah so both the concept you need to apply to solve this question so that's it from the this okay so this uh, functional dependency set equivalent question i am not going to solve so you can like oh, solve it afterwards so what is the concept here of equivalence if this is f and say this is f dash okay if by using this functional dependencies you can get all the functional dependencies in f dash and vice versa from f dash you can get all the functional dependencies in f then you can say both are equivalent okay so equivalence of f and f dash i can say f covers f dash when you can get all the possible functional dependencies of f dash by using f and f dash covers f so if you get all the possible functional dependencies of f by using f dash then we can say f dash covers f if both the conditions are satisfied then we can say like f and f dash are equivalent okay so you can try to solve you just need to take the closure of left hand side and see whether you are getting the attributes or not we already solved this type of question in quiz 2 session so you can watch that also so yeah and that's it now let us solve this question okay so this relation a we have this functional dependency decompose into a1 a2 
such that a1 is pr a2 is pqs t the following statements is are correct so 3 and f bc and f let us check whether a is in bc and f or not so what is a a is pr right so what is the condition for bc and f left hand side must be a key right for every functional dependency hello is anyone there yes sir yes sir okay no 12 students okay okay so just try to find out the candidate key first what is the candidate key s is present i can remove r is present t is present q is present so p must be a part of candidate key take the closure of p so p p p r he gives us r p r doesn't give us anything we just take the combination of p q p s and p d you don't need to consider the combination of p r because p r already checked right same thing yes sir so take the combination of p q p q p r then s p q r u m t so i am getting all the attributes p s so p s s s s and then r no right what about p t p t s no s no s you don't s. get sir we need q uh, for s so no right so p t is also not possible only p q is possible uh no what is any combination remaining so p q is then so p s r t p s r t s t i will get q right no no s is already key right p q is key p q is key right yes sir p q is the key p q s yeah p q is the key so p s r t So am I getting Q here? From ST, ST I'm getting. Yes. P S T can be also possible key, na? No, not P S T. Yes, P S T can be also possible key. Hmm. Because if I consider P S T will give me P S T, then from because anyway I need to find out whether I'm getting Q or not. So Q I can get only by one way. That is S T should be there, right? Yeah. So. P Q and P S T is the candidate key. Now other combinations are not possible. So P Q P S T is the two candidate key. Uh, P Q is satisfying my this condition. We say now because left hand side must be key, right? P determines R. No, this violates my B C N F condition. So it is not in B C N F. It does mm -hmm. check for R is C N F or not for C N F. Non prime attribute should give me non prime attribute. now my prime attributes are p q s t non prime attributes are r only right now let us check whether a is in uh, b c n f sorry 3 n f or not sir it is in 3 n f right yeah, because p q determines the p q is a key this is okay p determines r so uh, so prime to non prime uh, prime attribute non prime attribute so basically this is the subset of candidate key right so it's violates my 2nf condition so it is not in 2nf it means it is not in 3nf so this is correct right are you getting it because for 3nf it should be in 2nf first right yeah yeah so this is correct then pst is only candidate key only is there So this is not correct. P Q is also candidate key. Hmm. The decomposition A is lossless. We need to check A one A two. Then check A one intersection A two. Common attribute is P only. Take the closure of P. Yes, sir. It's lossless. P R. P R. Yes, we are getting A one, right? So it's lossless. What about dependency preserving? A one is P R. So what is F one applicable? P determines R is there. 
Yes. So, so when we do that intersection and we get one of the relations, we say that it is lossless. Yes. Any a one or a two. Here in this case we are getting a one, so that's why it is lossless. And if we get a two, then we can still it is a lossless. Now for a dependency preservation, how to check whether a one and a two are not dependency preserving? Like how to check? So first, write down the decomposed relation and whatever the applicable functional dependencies is there. So for a one we have p r f one. I can get p determine r. Can I get r determine p here? If I take the closure of r based on this, no, right? So this is not correct. Only p determines r is there. What about a two? Well, for yeah. r two p, we need to check r uh, p uh, r closer from the given functional dependency f. Yes, yes. So, like in this case, also you need to find out all the possible functional dependencies that is applicable to this a two. So for that, you can take the uh, closure of each attribute based on the parent functional dependencies, and whatever the attributes are coming as a part of a two, that is will be applicable, right? So for example, p determines r is not there. Like directly, you can say here, like for this question, it is not needed because you can say p q applicable, like p q determine is applicable because s is there. p q r determine t is also there, right? p q r determine t is also there. And S T determines Q is also there, right? So this, this, this is preserved in A two, and this functional dependency is preserved in F one. So all the functional dependencies are preserved. So this is not correct, right? Mm -hmm. Sir, yeah, if any of yeah. the functional dependency is not present, then we have to find the closure of this F one, F two. Yeah. So for example, we have one more functional dependency. Say P determine. No, P Q uh, R. Okay, say R determine S. Okay, we have no. Suppose we have this functional determine uh, functional dependency R determine S. Now you cannot uh, preserve here because S is not present and here R is not present, right? So directly it is not applicable. So we need to check whether this functional dependency is preserved or not. For that you need to find out F one and F two. So for F one, P determines R is the only functional dependency applicable. But for F two, you need to find out all the possible functional dependencies, right? For example, take the closure of P. Uh, what we are getting based on parent functional dependencies, P only, right? Yeah. Take the closure of Q. No, from P, I am getting R, but R is not present. Now take the closure of uh, Q. Q only. Take the closure of S. S only. T. T only. And take the combination of P Q. PQ, I am getting PQS, all the attributes, right? Yes. So here I can say PQ determine ST, right? Can I say like this? Yes, sir. Yeah. So if I am getting the closure, like PQ closure is PQS, then I can say PQ determine S, PQ determine T, PQ determine Q, also PQ determine uh, uh, ST, also, right? So that I can say from this uh, concept. So the, it will be there. Now let us check the combination of P S and P T. Two combinations. So P S, what I will get from P S, P R, and S. Nothing, right? P S only. Then P T. P T only. P T only. P R T. Yeah. So that is the case. So two combinations are over. Then P Q is over. And what is remaining? S T, right? So Q S T. Take Q S T closure. Q S T. S T will give me Q. Ah, uh, am I getting P here? I cannot get P because P is so only this much functional dependency. Now, once you find out all the functional dependencies, take the closure of R because we need to check uh, whether this functional dependency is preserved or not. Take the closure of R based on F one union. F two. So if you take the closure of R, uh, this functional dependency we are not getting, so we can say it is not preserved. So that's the simple process. So suppose we have this relation R decompose into R one, R two, R three. Lossless means if I join all these three relation, I should get R one. That is my lossless. 
for dependency preserving find out all the function dependence applicable to r1 r2 then r3 then consider f dash such f1 union f2 union f3 if any functional dependency on the parent side is not directly preserved then you need to take the closure of left hand side of that functional dependency based on f1 okay and see whether you are getting it or not if you are not getting it then it is not preserved so right so you need to check you directly looking at the decomposition you cannot guarantee it so you need to check it okay there is no shortcut for that okay any doubt in dependency preserving part or normalization part anyone so just remember those uh, concept that will be in a steps are the same like find out candidate key find out prime attribute non prime attribute for every question of normalization you need to find out these things right then only you can check whether subset of candidate key is determining non prime attribute or non prime attribute determining non prime attribute right now what is the key candidate key only all those thing will come only when when you find out these things right so every question you need to find out this thing so practice uh, based on uh, how to find out candidate key and prime attribute non prime attribute so that is for 1 nf 2 nf 3 nf bc nf now for 4 nf there should be no multi value dependency multi value dependency means no mvd and what is mvd so if you refer to a slide there are few conditions four five conditions are there that you need to remember okay but for mvd for a relation to have mvd there are few condition what are those condition is tell me i have discussed this so it will help you to solve the problems when you will get a 4 nf decomposition anyone remember what are those two condition so there must be at least three attributes Yes, sir. And two must not yeah. independent. Three, two must be independent, right? Mm. Independent. So even if I say A multi determine B, or say A multi determine B C, then A B C or A B A B C, yeah, A B C and A B. Will be my in four nf because there is not uh, it should have yeah because it is dependent now we can consider this a dependent we need to check yeah if we have this a determine a multi determine b as a functional or multi or dependency and if we take one table say r one in which we have only a b so we don't need to check for this r one because there is only two attribute we can directly say it is in four nf sir in second condition you said two must be in uh, independent. Two must be independent. Yeah. Suppose there are three attribute, and out of which two must be independent. Say, for example, B and C must be independent. Independent in this case, B determine C or C determine B should not be applicable to these two columns, right? This functional dependence should not be present. Then only we can say it is independent, right? If this yes, is the sir. case, uh, then we can say MVD. But just if there are relations with two attributes only. No need to check. It is in four enough, right? There is no MVD in that directly. No need to check mm -hmm. for that. There are three attributes only. You need to check. So in this way, you can eliminate the options when there are four and four enough decomposition questions. But if there is such questions, so you need to see whether MVD is applicable to not for this table. Either you can do like remember those five conditions, like four five conditions are there in the slides, or what I have explained in the previous sessions. Sir, like swapping values or something, you said. Suppose we have a determine multi determine b. So what I am saying, keep the a value same and exchange the beta values, b values, and you will get two new tuples. If those two tuples are already present in the table, then you can say MVD is there. Okay. Yes, so for example, let us take option A. This is my A. This is my B. So C number is my A. C name is my B. So let us take. Uh, let us check this for now you need to consider any two tuples such that a value is same so a value is same here yes 108 108 okay 
Now let us take these two tuple. Now what I am saying, exchange the beta value. So instead of John, it will be Stephen, right? And here instead of Stephen, it will be John. So you are getting two new tuples. One zero eight John Boston Queens S B I Bank. So is it present in the table? One zero eight John Boston. But here you can see branch name is different, right? So yes, that so particular no row is not present. So I can say this is not applicable. This is not M V D is applicable. Now check for A and B. Now in this case, my B is combined address and branch name. Here C name is A. So this is A and address and branch name is my B. Now take any two tuples such that having the same a C name. So which are those? Because by definition, you can see if those five conditions are applicable only if T one alpha equals to T two alpha, right? Remember this condition is there. Then only there are four such conditions. So T one alpha must be equals to T two alpha. Same only we are saying here also. So there must be two tuple of A. Then only we can apply this condition. So C name. Amber, amber. Ah, amber is there, right? Amber, amber. So just exchange uh, this thing. Chicago, Austin. So this is C. This is A. And here Austin, Austin. So it is Austin, and this is Austin only, right? And here it will become Chicago, right? Now let us see Amber, Chicago, Austin, SBI is there. Amber, Chicago, Austin, ICICI Bank was there, okay? Okay. So we need to. This is ICICI Bank, right? And this is SBI Bank. So Amber, Austin, SBI is there? No. In the Amber, Austin, no. It is not present, right? So Amber, Chicago, and ICIC is present. So, so the ones we have, we are swapping the values in. Mm -hmm. We'll disregard them, and then we'll see if any other uh, tuple is having those values, which we get after swapping, right? No, we should not disregard them because it is already present, na. So Amber, Chicago, ICIC is already present, right? Huh. In this first row. And then Amber Chicago, uh, sorry Amber Austin, SBI. This row is same, right? Yeah. Yes. But, but, but this thing, uh, C value should be same, na? No, A should be same, B value should be same, and then we should say. Yeah. Yes, the C number is different, na? Yeah, C number is different, na? Yeah, so this is this tuple is basically Amber Austin. SBI then two zero four right, Amber Austin SBI is there but two zero four is not present here right. Yes yes. Yeah, this is not correct. So if this two zero four is present here, and we are getting the same Amber uh, say Chicago and SBI then we can say but it is not present so this is also not applicable. Now what about C underscore number and address branch. So you need to check for all the possible things right. So for C number. At uh, C name branch, C number for two zero four two zero four is there? No. Uh, which one is one zero eight? Is there one zero eight? And C name branch, C name is John I C I C I Stephen S B I. So instead of uh, John, it will be Stephen. Here it will be John. It will be S B I and it will be I C I C I. Let me use. So this is Stephen. This is John. This is SBI, and this is ICICI, not Stockholm ICICI, right? And this is Queen's SBI. Now see, John, Stephen, settle. Uh, Queen SBI is there. Or one zero eight, one zero eight. Stephen, settle. Queen SBI is there, right? This row is there. One zero eight John Boston uh, Stockholm I C I S is there. One zero eight John Boston Stockholm I C I S is there, right? For this particular one zero eight, my M V D conditions are getting satisfied. But you need to check for other C number also, which is having the same A value. So one zero eight is done. So for this, it is satisfied. Two zero four is not present. One zero three no. Forty one no. Okay. So now I can say option C is applicable because like for 
वन जीरो जीरो एट दिस इंस्टेंट माई कंडीशन आर गेटिंग सैटिस्फाइड राइट सपोज वी हैव वन मोर कंडीशन सच दैट टू जीरो फोर ऑल्सो देन इन दैट यू नीड टू चेक फॉर टू जीरो फोर ऑल्सो ओके इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट फॉर वन जीरो एट गेटिंग सैटिस्फाइड देन इट इज अपलिकेबल यू नीड टू चेक फॉर ऑल टी वन अल्फा इक्वल्स टू टी टू अल्फा राइट दैट्स द डेफिनेशन ओके यू कैन ट्राई आउट फॉर दिस दिस इज नॉट अपलिकेबल यू कैन चेक इट एनी वन एनी डाउट इन दिस पार्ट एम वी डी सो बिकॉज टू जीरो फोर इज नॉट अकरिंग लाइक टू टाइम्स therefore we do not need to check that right? yeah by definition if you go by those five conditions this condition also applicable when mm -hmm. t1 alpha equals to t2 alpha so there must be a uh, two instances of that particular a value right then only we need to check sir in this 108 case c number we have to check for both uh, the 108 values yeah 108 because only that's why like for a should be same na if we are saying a multiple determine b You have to select such a combination that A must be same, and we have to exchange the B value, right? So one zero eight, one zero eight. Why is D not correct? Uh, C name address. You can check why D is not correct. C number, a uh, C name address, right? Uh, let us take one zero eight, one zero eight. C name and address. So John Settle, Stephen Boston. It will be this Stephen, and it will be Boston. So one zero eight Stephen Boston Stockholm is there? No, one zero eight Stephen no, Boston is not there, right? So this new row we are not getting. So you can check it. Yeah. So only option C is applicable. The branch name will be different. Okay. Yeah. Branch name is different. Sir, also this uh, which you have written that A determine B, and then R one A B is four and F. Hmm. That is. Like not the case, right? Because if there is multi-value de dependency, the four and f would not be there. Here, yeah. Oh no, here only two attributes are there, na. Okay. So even if a multi-determine b is there, concept of functional dependency is not applicable because by definition there must be some at three attributes, right? There are okay. only two attributes here, so it is already in four and f. No need to check. Okay. Yeah. If, now this. Customer table is not in four enough because we have MVD right, and that is this one. So you can uh, try it out. Okay, we have good examples also. I think in quiz two there was very good question based on this MVD. Yeah. So that's thing from normalization part. Now week seven is web fundamentals. So we are not focusing on that. Just go through the slides. Or lectures once that is enough. Okay, slides or lectures that is enough. We are already asked question in OP, right? Mandatory question from week seven, so that's the case. So slides and lecture uh, go through it once that will be enough. Uh, that's it. Anyway, way fundamentals like you should know that's the case. Now for week eight, you can watch tutorial and there we have one important concept of binary search tree. So if we if we give some order, you should be able to. Uh, draw the uh, BST, right? Now tell me, like, how to draw BST for this? Yes. You start off with twenty-one, and yes. the larger so one thirty-two will go to the right. Thirty-two will check, go to the right. Yeah, check whether this thirty-two is greater than or less than a twenty-one, right? If it is greater than, it will come on the right side. If right it is side less side. than, it will come on the Left side, right? So thirty-two is greater, yes. so this will come on this side, like this, like this. What happened? Correct? No. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Thirty-two. One will Now, come on the left. Side. Yeah. Now and eight is less than twenty-one, so right, left-hand side, but it is greater than one. Right? Greater than one, so it will go to right the right. right. Of one. Same for nine. Nine. Same for ten. Same for ten. Fifteen. Also 15. same. 16 also same because 21 less 27. 27 what about 27? Be on the left hand side of 32. Left hand side of 32. Yes. 32. Yes, that's it, right? Now we need to find out height of the resulting binary tree. Now what is the height? Tell me. Six. It's seven. No. Or six. This is level zero. Okay. This is then level six. one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So height of the binary search tree is six. So you should be able to form the BST given on the sequence. So that's it. Like we can ask any 
uh, which one is uh, leaf node, which one is root node, right? Uh, what are the what is the total of left hand side of this particular node and right hand side of this particular node? So basic thing is that you should be able to draw the BST based on the given sequence. Then you, what are the quotient follows? You should be able to answer. But the main thing is that you should be able to draw the BST. So this one is easy. Nothing in that. Okay, yeah, that's it from week one to eight. So whatever I have discussed, uh, please try to solve uh, once more. Okay. Any doubt sir, from week one? Sir, in uh, week twelve, for some topics there are no activity questions included. No last few topics. For week twelve, only lecture one, lecture two. Yeah. So the last few topics they don't have additional big data onwards. They don't have any no, questions. No, no. It is just for your information purpose. You can just watch the lecture. That will be enough. But they are not relevant from the point of view of the end term. End term also you can say yeah. After the end term so also which, you can watch. Which which one? Which one? Week twelve, last three lectures. Okay, we have twelve last three lectures. Yeah, so no only activity, one, no graded one, questions are there. Only twelve point one and twelve point two are enough. Yeah, if we see a practice and graded assignment question, it is based on lecture one and two only. Okay, so thank you. It was a very informative okay. and good. Thank you, everyone. Session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All the best for end term. Okay. Thank you, sir. It was a very good session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye, bye. Stop recording.